I'm recording now. We're live, Rob. Hi, my name's Rob, and your name is Ronnie. Oh, not the hi, two, Ronnie, two aka Ronnie's? Danny. Yeah, no, I'm Danny. De heck. Yes. Yep. Um, Sorry. We're really starting funny. this video a little bit late because Danny's head was so big, we had to um, widen the door to get him in tonight. Glad I shaved um, my eyebrows. He he was in the New York Times yesterday. Was I? Yes. Why didn't you tell me? You told me. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I woke up. I thought it was a dream. So we're going to be talking about everything hypernation, hyperverse, hyperfund, hyper, hyperbole, mm. even, hyperbolic, whatever that is, rhetorical devices. Mm. We're going to use them all. But actually, what we're going to do is I'm going to ask Danny, because I haven't been, I haven't been surfing the hyper highway of news on what um, is all up to date on hypernation in particular. So Danny, 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 yep. what have I missed out on in the last four weeks? Well, brace yourself. People are now living in the in the ecosystem. No way. Nah, it's a joke. <laughs> of course they're Aren't not. They? No, there's no such thing as the ecoverse. Do you know that I heard the other day, I shot you not, I heard the other day, right, that there's actually many hyperverses out there even Roblox, which my daughter plays, is actually a uh, not no not a not a hyperverse, a metaverse. Oh, um, well, I think I, I don't play games at all. I hate games, and I think the gaming people have been doing the metaverse stuff for a long time. Mm. And I think the whole thing is bringing the the fifty year old plus people into the gaming world because I actually when I listen to all the stuff that's going on with Hyper Nation at the moment. I actually, it sounds like a game, and they've just bought themselves a ticket for an arcade game. It certainly does sound like a game. I'm not too sure anybody's winning from that game so far, but <laughs> game. It, it is. Yeah. It's a hyper game. It's like a squid game, but without no, squid. No, it's like a gambling. Yes. So any anyway, mm. anyway, the last the last I got involved, they that the, they were trying to um, get everybody their one X back. Those people that had invested in mm. Hyperverse, they were trying to get their one X back. And uh, there was something about if you... Um, they've they've you, actually already started paying people back their 1X. Did you know that? That's what they've come out seriously. with. Seriously. Just in the last couple of weeks, they have now said that process has begun. And everyone's going, well, why haven't I got any money back? So my, my understanding was that you were going to get paid back your initial investment, which personally I think is... Totally impossible. I can't see how they could possibly do that. But yeah. has has that started? About six, seven weeks ago, they said that they will probably do something like produce some sort of coin, and that probably is actually now the fact, and it's called hyper bond. So you paid cash, yeah, to get your initial membership. But people aren't actually going to get paid back cash. No, they've, they've decided that they would pay out the rewards in another token that no one knows. Now get this, no one knows the value of this token. <laughs> yeah. Right. However, you can do things with this token. Like what? Get into the next Ponzi scheme. Which is... Yeah, so let's... What, let's hy hy hypernation or another thing? So... Originally, um, well, I spoke to a guy who invested twenty five thousand, yeah, twenty five thousand dollars of his USDT. He now has two hundred thousand plus HU dollars in his Hyperverse account. Now they, at one point, were worth like seven dollars each on the exchange. I could be wrong, but around about seven dollars each. Today, they are worth zero 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 one. Sent. Is this the HVT? No, this is HU, I think. And then there was also HVT. Now, I'm not a genius on this, and I could be saying things wrong, but originally when you went and put $25,000 into Hyperverse, that would give you $50,000 uh, HU. And then once, and that would be the, the reward money that grew each day, and you'd get your rewards, and then you would transfer your HU into HVT, Hyperverse Token. Right. Then um, all of a sudden, HU started to be worth nothing. Hyperverse Token was also parallel nothing. 
So hyperverse token is HVT. Yep. Yeah, because I know there's one you can go on, you can have a look online, and it's worth oh, like spaceship. zero point zero zero one cent or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So right. ma- it's MOF, molecular structure, something or other. So basically, yes. any coin that's been associated with hypercapital, hyperfund, hyperverse has been pumped and dumped, and now they have hypernation D. So what's that? H. Oh, uh, HND. Yeah. And there's also right, an yeah. HNT. Now, at the moment, people are accumulating, and I could be wrong, but I think I've got this right because it is complicated, that people are accumulating Hyper Nation D in the back end of Hyper Nation. And that hasn't even got onto the market yet. So there's no such coin on any exchange that people are getting accumulating their wealth in. So basically, this um, token or dollar, because I know, yeah, right, there was an HND, Hypernation Dollar, and a Hypernation Token HNT. And I think one went on an exchange or was launched when they did the launch or something like that. But yep. the thing that uh, really interested me when I was watching that Hypernation launch is they're talking about white papers and yellow papers and basically nothing was going to be starting until next year, late late next year, late 2023. Can you imagine that you're an architect and you're going to build a house and then halfway through building the house... All right, nice house. The, the, um, the bank says, oh, by the way, we haven't got the plans of the house ready yet. So that's the white paper. Mm-hmm. And then once you've got these plans ready, you get an idea of the concept of your house. But then those white papers need to go off and they make yellow papers. So Hypernation hasn't even got a white paper yet. So it hasn't even got a plan of build or structure. And then even if it is, like you know how some designers go far out design and then it goes to the structural engineer and the structural engineer goes, no, mate, that's going to cost far too much to build. So uh, that's what the yellow paper is all about. So... Hypernation's right. plan. If I, if I can interrupt you yes, right you can, there, Bob. the one thing that I find re- really fascinating is that if you read up about Hyperfund and what it was supposed to have done, if you read up about Hyperverse and what it was supposed to have done, and you're reading up now about Hypernation and what it's planning to do, is that it doesn't really matter what iteration it is. They haven't done anything. Yeah. And yet there was a video where... Ryan Zhu was saying that there were, I don't quote me on this, I could be wrong, a thousand developers working. What have they, what have they done? Yeah, that was, I think, Hyper uh, Hcash. And, and it was, he, he, insi- well, he didn't insinuate, he said he had a thousand people. Mm. That was just uh, December 2021. Because he was oh, in, okay. he was in yep. Dubai with Brenda Chunder, um, yeah, Cal Pesh yeah. Patel, uh, uh, and yeah, Keith Williams, right. and also Bitcoin Rodney. Right, and in my opinion, they are hyperverse and hypernation, and they were the people that I reckon they went to Dubai and they were planning this whole thing. Yeah, I, I, well, I struggle with a lot of these concepts. Yeah, and like, first of all, I struggle with the 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 only real thing about crypto involved in any of these schemes is that if you want to get involved, you have to pay crypto, which is basically untraceable. Yeah. A lot of people come to me and go, well, why don't the police do something about it? Why don't we do a a high court injunction? And I just say, they've got the money. There's no proof. It's I don't even know. I mean, you know, you can't go to court and say, I think they'd have to have proof. I, th- I think you'd have to... Like a lot of people are quite critical, and I, I find it interesting about the regulation and about normal currency. But the advantage with regulation is that people who are investing in anything are protected, mm. and with normal currency, um, there's a paper trail. You know, like you know where the money went from one account into another account. Yeah. The moment that you're paying anything with crypto, you're paying into a crypto wallet. And you have no idea who owns the wallet that you just deposited mm. money into. Like, for example, 
anybody who has uh, become a member of any of the any crypto scheme, mm. you don't like you didn't pay into J Blog's account number, blah blah blah, at certain bank. You paid into a massive number. Yeah. And you have yeah. no idea who owned that number or who mm. had access, you know, like, to that number. Yeah. I'd like to go back, actually, to talk about the people that got stuck in Hyperverse because I know there's lots of people who've lost a lot of money. So they've been playing around with them, basically saying they're going to get their one times back. And if you're not familiar with the one times theory, it's basically if you put $1,000 in, they're alleging that you're going to get your $1,000 back. But they've created this coin called Hyperbond. And the Hyperbond can only be used to gain entry into um, Hypernation. Now, to get into hypernation, imagine going to a nightclub and there's a, what do you call those guys, a bouncer outside, yep. and he's decided to put a cover charge and just get in into the nightclub. So originally they told everyone that they could pay 100 uh, HUT, uh, USDT, to get a passport, which is labelled an NFT, just to get into the new platform. And if they did that, they could bring over... No, no, they couldn't bring over anyone uh, because they had different levels and you could buy a purple NFT for $10,000 or a platinum NFT for $100,000, which means you'd be a node and be in charge of making some of the big decisions. But the 10,000 NFT holders basically could bring their, their 20 levels over. And I learned a lot about 20 levels just a wee while ago, which I'd like to share later on. I'm glad yep. you did, because... It's amazing. I now I realise why they don't care that they're paying $10,000 for an NFT. But the $100 NFT was like the nightclub, uh, the bouncer's cover charge. So, so my understanding is that there's a green box and a yellow box, a purple yep. and a platinum. So yep. just for any viewers to keep up there... Not that I'm an expert yeah. on this. I feel silly uh, explaining it because it sounds like a, a stupid thing. I know, I know. We, we, don't, we sounds... don't believe this, by the way. We don't believe this. We just are repeating what they're teaching people who are believing it. A hundred dollar USDT or USD, USDT, yeah, I think it is, is the green box, which... No. Green box... I think it's one hundred and twenty-five or one hundred and thirty dollars. No, you could be right. You could be right. Is it three hundred USDT, which is the yellow? No, you're getting confused. I'll explain it. You, you listen. So, if you were an existing member of Hyperverse, yeah. you got a discount, and you could get in basically for a hundred dollars with a yellow box, and then you could get ready and you'd sit there ready to be on the vessel, as they said, off to the hyper uh, hyper nation. Yeah, yeah. And people that you had your ticket. no association with any of the Ponzi schemes beforehand who were fresh, they could buy, they let this green box drop and people could then pay, I think it was 125 for a green box and have the same privilege as a yellow box holder had, except it was a little bit more. So basically, if you wanted to get into Hypernation and you believe that Hyperverse wasn't a crook company and you believe that I'm going to go to Hypernation, you were getting a discount of 20% roughly. Because you had already been in Hyperverse. Okay. I knew I knew there was a 20% discount there somewhere. I'll tell you that in a minute because you if, haven't quite got that yet. Yeah, yeah no, I probably haven't. I, I, I totally agree. I probably haven't. I knew there was a 20% discount if you were moving from Hyperverse somehow to Hypernation. But the other thing that really blew my mind is yep. talking about the gamers in the green box, mm -hmm. is that I heard it suggested by one of the leaders that a gamer would have heard about the hypernation right community yet so excited, mm -hmm. and they would be going and paying 125 USDT, which um, is around about 200 plus New Zealand dollars at the moment, to mm -hmm. have a look. Yeah. And I mean, no one, no one would have a look. If you're a gamer, you could go out and buy the best game in the world mm. um, and own it for less money than that. Well, know? funny story. A lady I know accidentally bought um, two uh, yellow boxes. and then Accidentally? Went, yeah, and you can only own one per ah. person. And she said, I've made oh, a mistake. And they're not transferable too, yes. Well, they wouldn't even refund her for making the mistake. Classic. Yeah, and I did sort of give her a hard time about why she did it. But anyway, she told me, so I thought, don't let the truth get in the way of a good story. 
No. All uh, right, excuse yeah. me for drinking on, on online. It is sweltering hot here in the Danny De Heat metaverse. <clears throat> it's the lighting, isn't it? Yeah. No, it's um, just your um, aura. So, oh, is it really? That's good. I'm getting nervous now. Don't put your hand back. Okay. Um, all right. So now you've got your passport. That is basically a cash grab for hypernation. And I believe they were probably trying to keep the mining going. That's what they're doing with the money because the mining for crypto is where I believe they see the value. So this whole exercise is about getting cash to keep the computers going because if you look at a few other Ponzi schemes that are happening at the moment, they have these packages where you can lease a computer of one of these um, Ponzi scheme companies and do your own mining and share the profit I, with them. I think, yeah, I think I think this is where you and I diverge a little bit. Could be. Because okay. it's all hypothetical, isn't it? It, it is. <laughs> everything <laughs> hyper is hypothetical. It's very good. It's mm. very good. Mm. Uh, because I... I I haven't seen anything that I mm. actually believe is tangible in any way mm. at all. But yes, there is a possibility that the money ha has come in to probably set up the development of the metaverse and and also to do mining for other cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum mm. or... Mm. I actually don't think I know well, anything more than Bitcoin. Well, uh, and it, the whole, the whole across the board of everything with crypto at the moment is, is unsustainable. It's all built on the hype. Even if you go and buy a Bitcoin, it's all hype. It's going to be this. It's going to be this. This is going to happen. If that happens, this happens, and everyone's going to be rich and live happily ever after. That's yeah. the stupid part about it all. Yeah. yeah. And have you yeah. heard recently about the FTX exchange? Yes, I have. Third, I la third <laughs> largest <laughs> cryptocurrency, legitimate as legitimate as cryptocurrency can be, has yeah. collapsed. And yeah. the SEC, I think it's the SEC, are investigating because apparently uh, the CEO of FTX um, may have allowed some of the um, investors' funds that came in to be invested on crypto to be used somewhere else. So that's the allegation at the moment that mm. is being looked into. And interesting enough, Bit no, not Bitcoin, um, Blockchain Global has just been in the Australian newspapers um, about four weeks ago. Okay, right. So that's the one that Sam Lee was yep. CEO, or, and or something the like guys that? that were behind that, Sam Lee sort of got out of it. Are basically explaining what happened, even though they're not liable. I don't know how, but they said that the funds that okay, people. Okay, oh, right. So that was a court case, wasn't it? Yep. Ye yes. So the funds that went into the company that were meant to be used for something were actually taken out and used for something else. Right. And that sounds like the same sort of deal. It, Maybe it's a common thing you do at the pub with the boys at the crypto I, farm, eh? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So where were we up to? Yeah, okay. So we were talking about the yellow boxes, the green boxes, and the discounts. But I think you were getting to hyper bond. Yeah. Inter yeah so basically, once you get through the past the doorman who takes a backhander. Yeah. We don't know where that money goes. You go upstairs and they say, right, if you want to buy a membership, and I could be wrong here, but I think it's 400, 800, and 1200. If you want to buy one of those memberships in Hyper Nations, you can actually use some of your Hyper Bond to get a 20% discount. Right. And the Hyper Bond is the thing that you bought using your. Um, funds or whatever out of Hyperverse. Yeah. So let's say that you put a thousand dollars in to Hyperverse and you never got your thousand dollars back. Yep. They will. They are saying that the only thing at the moment that's on the cards is they are promising those people that they will return their initial investment. So then you get other people that have got their thousand dollars back and they have reinvested with their profit and made, um, you know, their three times, four times return in their money. Those people don't have any choice but to wait for a miracle or another announcement. So those people have converted their leftover funds from hype, um, their HU and they've transferred it into hyper bond. And that means they forfeit any possibility of getting paid out if they come up with any money from the burnt Ponzi scheme. They have forfeit that opportunity because they've decided to cash up in one platform and then move their worthless coins onto hyper nation. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I heard a little bit about this a few weeks ago. So, so just clarify this. If you moved anything, anything at all from Hyperverse, mm -hmm. you are, are deemed to have made a withdrawal of some sort, and that's it. You know, like your, On your one own. X claim has gone, hasn't it? Yeah, they reckon. I've heard of. I mean, I don't know if this is true, but theoretically, eighty percent of the worth of what you potentially could get back, you forfeit by moving it out of Hyperverse into Hyperbond onto Hypernation. Excellent. Yeah. The one thing that really confuses me here is I think I'm a reasonably logical person. I think I'm mm. a reasonable thinker here. Mm -hmm. All of the claims that would have got me in if, if I had invested into Hyperverse, which was... The 3x thing, you know, like whatever you invest, you're going to get three times your money. Or if you went into membership two, you're going to get four times your money. For most people, that seems to have never, ever happened. Well, no, it has happened for the people at the top. So you got people... Yeah, like, yeah, yeah that, yeah, that small percentage yeah. at the top. The vast majority seem to have got nothing out of this, made no withdrawals. No. All all those claims basically came to thin air, and yet they're still there. Well, the, the worst thing about it, which is really interesting, is the $10,000 NFT, the purple box, was sold to all the people who made a shitload of money on Hyperverse. <clears throat> yep. And they had an obligation to show their teams that they were true leaders. So they levered that to tell those people, look, you've got to take... You've got to go spend $10,000 on a purple NFT. I heard a rumour that 1,000 people did that, which is quite a lot. So that's, that's is that 10 million? I heard also uh, 1,000 times 10,000 is 100 million, 10 million, I think. Could be 10 million. So that's a lot of money. But when you think this was, well, funny enough, the New York Times said, that's one thing I didn't agree with. They said that it was a billion dollar. My calculation shows that one point, they say 1.6 people invested in Hyperverse. And at three hundred dollars a ticket, that's four billion bucks. Yeah, I, it's interesting because at some stage, like sev several months ago, there was a figure bandied around when they were moving from the first membership in Hyperverse to the to membership two point mm. That in one of those meetings, there was a figure mentioned about. How how large the membership in Hyperverse was, mm. and it was in the millions, like like several million. Mm. And if the minimum that you could invest was three hundred dollars, now I look, I could I could be wrong. I thought it was about six or seven million that they had said were in. At that base figure, that's a hum humongous amount of money. Plus, as, as you've said on a few of your videos and I've heard elsewhere, you can, you can, you could have invested far more than that minimum 300 bucks. Right down 23 minutes on your board that you remember. Okay, um, Rob knows what that's all about. It will save him hours of trying to line up our audio. I've got to tell you that part. Uh, 23 minutes. Yeah, so the, the con is that the people that can theoretically profiteer from Hypernation, and I do honestly believe that Hypernation can get traction, is the people that have already you made do? a talent. Yeah, I do. Because the people, the sales team, they've taken the assets out of Hyperverse, moved them over to Hypernation, and they've all invested 10,000 USDT, which is 10,000 American dollars, basically, and they've taken their sales team over there. Now, let, let's explain it really simply about the... And also, the purple NFT holders have 20 tiers. And they're also alleging to pay out uh, 0 0.7 daily rewards, which is seven times your return on investment. So layman's term, you put $1,000 in, they're saying that you're going to get $7,000 back over so many days. And I've forgotten how many days it is. Well, I, I heard that you were going to get rewards of, I, and don't quote me on this, 0.7% per day. Yeah. Which would be... So it used to be 0 0.5 with Hyperverse. Yes. And they changed it from, when they changed to Hyperverse 2.0, they changed it from 1.5 to 
Oh, no. They changed it. So instead of 600 days getting three times your investment, they changed it to 330 days before you'd get your investment, which is actually a, a, twice as long. So uh, I've even forgetting how long that is, 600 days. So that's is, they're saying it's going to take three and a half years. Is that right? To get your money back. Well, to yeah. be perfectly confused, you know, like if there's anybody out there watching this video who's in hypernation, yeah. who who knows the facts better than us, yeah. put them in the comments, you know, like below, uh, educate us and educate ev everybody else because a mm. lot of this is really, really difficult to follow. Yeah. Probably for a reason. Yeah, but I'll make it really simple for you. So Rob decides to, um, I decide to put $1,000 into hypernation and then I tell Rob about it. Now Rob goes, well, if Danny put $1,000 in, I'll put $1,000 in. So then I get $200 of Rob's money. But in, I'll, I'll use the old hypernation, uh, hyperverses plan because that's what I remember explaining this well the other day. But if I leave my $200 that I got from introducing Rob in hyperverse, I would potentially get six hundred dollars from Rob because I'd comp oh, compound because it because of the yeah the three times. The thing that actually brings me onto a thing where I was having a look at, and to be perfectly honest, I can't remember which one it was, but I thought it was either either hyperverse or hypernation or both, and it had that there, there was a, a ten tier. Well, let, system. let me let me explain the first so. So out of Rob, I introduce my friend Rob, and I say, Rob, you should invest what I do. I've now made two hundred dollars out of Rob. So then Rob goes and finds two more friends, and he says, I've invested a thousand dollars, and he tells two friends. So now Rob gets two hundred dollars, and two hundred from his other friend. I actually get fifteen um, percent from your friends. So now I've yes. got thirty percent. So then those friends decide to go and tell two friends, you get 20%, they get 15%, and the next one down the road gets um, 20%. You know, it, so I think yeah, you told I, me. I, I think it starts yeah. at 20 and then 15 and then it decreases as, as you go up the ladder. But there's mm. 10 tiers 20. of rewards, 20 10 or 20. Which is unheard of. Are, well, it's unheard of. <laughs> and that's right? why you get invested in these companies, because it's so amazing. It, it is amazing. <laughs> um, almost unbelievable, one might say. Almost unbelievable. i drown in my drink. But what it meant is that if you invested money and there were 10 tiers above you, that greater than 50%, over half of the membership money that you paid got distributed to all of the tiers above you, which means that your 1x, which might have been, you know, like for argument's sake, $1,000, mm -hmm. after everybody else in that chain had been, part, your upline had been paid, there's only $480 left, I think. I think there was only like 48% left. So when the company say that they're going to pay you back 1x, they're going to conjure up $520 or 52% yeah. from where? <laughs> because they weren't trading. They weren't yeah. making any money. And they certainly weren't clawing it back off of your mm. upline either. Mm. So it, you know, it's not like we took your money, we're holding your money, we haven't used your money, we're going to give your money back. Mm. Actually, we took your money, we distributed your money to your upline, there was only 48% of it left, but now we're going to say we're going to conjure up the other 52%, which is pretty impossible since they haven't been trading. But wait, there's more. Be there's more. Because <laughs> if they didn't take that money out, and a lot of people haven't cashed out of Hyperverse, yeah, they've left yeah, their money there. Like it would be technically in there still. So my, yeah. my mate that was on the New York Times, uh, Mike Lucas, he put 25000 in, and he got 50000 HU, went and bought a whole lot of memberships, and then that's compounded. And so now he's got 200000 of HU in his account. That's worth nothing. Mm. So if those people that had been getting paid, the compound, so the people that were getting all the commission, so, you know, I think you said 520? I, from memory, it yep. was about 52% of, of any member's investment, if there were 10 tiers above, yep. went off to other people So $1,000... Theoretically, they they pay out five hundred and twenty in rewards. 
However, if all those people decided this is a good thing, let's leave it in here because this is going to triple. Then mm. it's even worse. You're talking about people that take it out as soon as they get it. Yeah, and <laughs> what I'm saying is that once you invested money, a lot of your money went, but then the company are not only having to distribute your money that went in, but they're also having to pay all of those other rewards, like mm. the three times or four times... Yeah. Where was it coming from? It's, Where could it possibly have come from? You know what a colander is, right? And yeah. they, have a, they have a colander and they're draining, they're draining the biscotti and somebody's bashing big friggin' holes in the bottom of it and it's pouring out so it just can't sustain itself. And, and the, real, the real silly thing about the whole lot is I've said to people who believe they're going to get their 1X and the company's done some really good things for people, I said, how is that process actually going to work? Are they going to send people USDT? And then when they come up with Hyperbond, which is just a token. Now, I don't know, um, there's another guy called Andreas, and he's in Super 1. And he can, you can just basically light up a token. And you can say, I could light up a token and say it's worth $10 a token. Then I could do a whole lot of advertising and marketing, and everyone's buying the DeHeck token. And all of a sudden, I say, well, there's actually... Hmm, 10 million tokens for sale at $10 each. And then I say to Rob, look, I'll let you just have these tokens for a dollar. And you go, wow, you know, and what are you going to sell them for? 10. So anyway, you put them on the market. Danny, Danny does a whole lot of marketing, creates a whole lot of hype. And then all of a sudden, everyone goes, they're starting to buy Danny's tokens. Then all of a sudden, Danny says, well, I'm going to keep, I know this other guy, I'm going to keep 55% of all the tokens for myself. And I'm going to go out here and give them to the, the peasants. And they're going to think these are valuable. Then all of a sudden, the tokens are now worth $15 a token. And then Danny goes, well, I've got um, five and a half, 550,000 of these tokens. I'm going to put them on the market for $7.50. Everyone's going to go, whoa, there's a sale. I'm going to buy these for $7.50. And all the $15 people go, we just got ripped off, you mongrels. And all these other people are grabbing to buy them. And then everyone goes, oh, it's crashing. And everyone tries to sell. And now the tokens are worth nothing. But in the meantime, the guy that's got 550,000 of these tokens has just made a shitload of money. That's how I see it. Yeah, you've yeah. just raised an interesting point there, right? Because there's, you know, like essentially anybody, right, somewhere there was talk about you could mine your own crypto or, no, no, mint, mint your own crypto. <laughs> And, of course, it assumes that somebody actually wants your crypto because, you know, as, as you were saying, you, you could mint the DeHeck coin, yeah. uh, you know, which I'm sure would be an interesting coin, very well sold. Well, what they're basically saying is few. that, um, yeah, what they're basically saying is, imagine if the government all of a sudden said, well, we're, we're going to be responsible for making all the money and we're printing all the, making all the prints, printing press and stamping all the coins, but then all of a sudden we're going to let Joe Blog make his own money. <laughs> Essentially, that is what it is going to say. And, and there's a lot of misleading talk here, Danny, because mm. people were saying that, you know, like some of these uh, cryptocurrencies um, and stable coins and all this are actually backed up by real physical assets. None of them are. No, no. None of them are. And, and that's been historically the big reason why people have got into silver and gold and all these things, because actually, you know, gold is basically backed up by itself. You know, mm. like if you buy a lot of gold, you own gold. But um, currency is actually valuable because people want it. People are, are earning it wanting to trade in it, such as US dollar and New Zealand dollar or Australian dollar, the Great Britain pound and euro. When you go into cryptocurrency, most of the world don't understand it and don't actually want it. It's only a very small fraction. Mm -hmm. Even with Bitcoin and Ethereum and those kind of um, well-known cryptocurrencies, everything else, you've got mm -hmm. to ask yourself, why, even if, even if all this talk about the metaverse were mm. true, mm. why, why do you, why can you only get in with a crypto coin that nobody's heard of, mm. and and nobody outside this little group actually wants it? Why can't we buy it with USDT? Is what why, you're saying? Why, yeah. No, no. Yeah. Why can't you buy it with US dollars? Yeah. 
<laughs> because well, yeah. then everybody would have real money that they could go to the shop or, you know, like they could purchase a house with, you know, like whatever it is. But this is all cryptocurrency. Mm. And, and of course, another thing that I, I thought was interesting is that why can't you just buy straight into the hyper units, the hyper cryptocurrencies, why do you have to go into something like USDT mm. and then go and swap the USDT for something else? Uh. Because actually USDT is more sought after than anything that hyper has ever come well, up with. Well, the exchanges won't let a lot of the coins or the tokens that Hyperverse and Hyper Nation have so Hypernation come out and say, "Oh, we can't. We we're not going to put this on a main exchange, because we don't we, we don't feel that the exchanges are stable." And now they'll use that FX thing as a <laughs> that is classic. Yeah, <laughs> but, but the honest the honest truth of it is that they probably aren't able to because they know it's a fake. So they use um, other um, decentralized. I don't know how this works actually. Other decentralized platforms to ch trade the tokens, which aren't on the the proper exchange, like Pancake Swap. I think is where you say, "Hey Rob, I'm selling a thousand a, a, a HU or HSV. Um, I'm putting it on the market, and then somebody's got their flag up saying that they will pay so much money for that." And so then yeah, yeah, and it yeah. is quite interesting that. Um and I'm not too sure which one it is, but I think it's HVT, mm. initially went up. But you're actually thinking, was that a legitimate increase? Mm. Or is that because it's on such a small um, trading platform exchange that that's been artificially manipulated up? Because it was only up for a short period of time, and now it's gone, you know, like well below its its float price to be literally, roughly, one one thousandth mm. of what it was initially worth. Because you know, Penny King Nark, his mate v Vivian, they were um, pumping another coin. I did it. I forgot what it was called, but it's on one of my videos. And they were basically looking at a graph and they were showing us how this coin had gone up and it gone down and it gone up and down. And that coin was worth 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.1. So if someone went along and put a thousand dollars into it, it would spike like, and they go, look at this graph. And I'm going, but look at the amount of money. And they mm. were saying, imagine if you put in, you know, bought something for 0.1% and it went up just by double. You would get triple, double your money, and I'm going, yeah, you know, and this is the, all this imagining and feel good factor about if, if, ifs. Yeah, and like anything around currency is that if you can't spend it, like you, you can't take HU, you can't take HV, you can't take, you can't even take USDT as far as I know. Mm. Into a shop and buy anything, you know, like it's not legal tender. Monopoly. Yeah, it, it basically is Monopoly yeah, and money. And halfway through the game, the bank has ran out when you're playing Monopoly. <laughs> and somebody has come along and said, well, why don't we use another currency? Yeah, you know, like, we'll just <laughs> actually grab some pieces of paper like this yeah. and we'll write our That's own uh, yeah. denomination on it and pay people out. You know, like, it's, yeah. I, I, yeah, it is interesting because, right, there's, there's so many questions and nobody's ever come up with any legitimate answers because mm. like the interesting thing i i know the video that you're talking about mm. just there about the currency that was going up and down and, and apollo i apollo don't know that it was apollo yeah um mm. but there was one where look. they were looking at the trends I'm looking there. and they were saying this shows or is likely show that it could do this and it could do that blah 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 mm. my question was when i was watching that is that why wouldn't you go and invest in the share market? Yeah. Because shares of businesses are doing exactly the same thing, but they're actually tied to ownership in a trading business. Mm. Yeah, you know, like you're getting a real tangible thing that people oh, want. Well, there's a good subject. Why are people so into crypto? I remember when David, the reporter from the New York Times, he kept on asking me to talk about Ponzi the Ponzi schemes way back in the 1920s. Mm -hmm. And he goes, what's the parallel with Ponzi schemes now? 
And I go, well, they're no different. It's just another layer of complexity. They put crypto have gone along and said, well, put crypto, put the blockchain, put um, you know coins and tokens and um, ecosystems and metaverses in there and confuse everyone and paint them a picture over here that this is going to be a beautiful story. And then, um, and then we'll run it as a Ponzi scheme. And then goes, oh, it's completely different. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think you are actually touching on a really good point there about confusing people. A lot of it is, yeah, like all all this language. I don't even even know if you've followed half of what we've been saying. You probably had to have watched other videos I to haven't. understand half of this. Mm. That. Uh, all of this is so complex to follow. If, if you go and watch any of Danny or my earlier videos, which were about the launches of Hy Hypernation and how they were explaining things, mm. and, and it was so complex. It was so very complex. So back in the 1920s, when Charles Ponzi first came up with the Ponzi scheme, which was basically, you know, like to take all of these memberships in and saying, I'm going to invest your money, I'm going to give you X, X amount return. And all he did was to hold on to the money. And I think he spent a bit of the money. Mm -hmm. And if anybody made a withdrawal, it was fine. As long as too many people didn't make a withdrawal at any one particular time. And he kept a ledger of how much you invested and he worked out, what your account balance would have been based on whatever um, um, return rate that he said you were going to get. Mm. Okay, right, right. So you had in a ledger the amount of money that you had in your bank with him. Yeah. Right, right. but of course it didn't exist. And, and when people uh, decided, you know, particularly in the 1920s, the Depression came along, everybody wanted the cash, so they went to Mr. Ponzi and said, you know, can we have our cash? And, of course, Mr. Ponzi didn't have any cash because he, he hadn't invested it. He hadn't invested it. Did they have Dubai back then? Uh, they didn't. I don't, well, they pro I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Is that where the slow boat from China? He's been went off to China. He had a slow boat from China. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think when you bring along a few factors here, mm. you get people... Who who want to believe that yep. there's a chance? I, yeah, I so the metaverse. That. Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah. You know that this is like the new thing. This is the new thing. Got to get in at the beginning. Uh, cryptocurrency. Oh, I've heard of that. You know, got to get mm. in at the I'm, beginning. I'm cleverer than the average bear. Yeah, huge yep. returns. You know, mm. I won't be greedy. I'm not going to stay in this for ten years. I'm just going to get in, write it up, you know, and jump off the wave at the top. And the, the other <laughs> thing interesting, they use a parallel, they give you an example. They often talk about wealthy people who started with nothing and got something. Yep. Their, their wealth started with the KFC guy. He didn't earn any money until he was over 60. Yep. But they often talk about Bitcoin, how it went up to 64,000, I think, and now it's back down to 16. But they talk about how no one believed Bitcoin and it was worth cents to buy. And yeah, now, and, now, and then look at it now. huh? And then they go, now look at what we're doing. Same deal, it's worth nothing. <laughs> it's like, it's like, and like, oh, a, a oh. lot of a lot of what pushed uh, right. This is me being naive here, but a lot of what I I, I think pushed Bitcoin up mm. is when a person like Elon Musk came along mm. and said, actually, you can buy a Tesla with Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, you know, and so th things like uh, uh, the world's wealthiest man or second or third wealthiest man, whatever he is, mm. are giving legitimacy to Bitcoin but it's still not really based on anything and it's still not mainstream and it's still not easy to trade it's still not easy to get in or get out of Bitcoin mm. unless you're well versed and the you know like it's trading from one coin to another I had um, I had money I bought Shiba Inu which was a coin that was worth I think it was worth 20 cents at the time but once upon a time it was worth 0, 0. 0.2 Oh, right. And then I bought it because it was going up. Yeah. And I thought, oh, I'll buy it. And then it went up, I think, to a dollar. So I like, I, I think, why well, I kind of, I'm, I think I 10 x my money. So I only put like, I put $100 in and then it went up. Yeah. So I put another $100 in. I thought, oh, I went up again and put another $100 in. And then I got up to $1,200. So it must have got up to a dollar a coin. And then I told Helen about it. She put some in and she's still got it in there. Well, she transferred it out when it started to die. But some people made millionaire out of that. And that's all I've done. I've made about four hundred dollars in my life out of crypto, and I got it out. You know, um, so I think a lot of people use scare tactics, and they get into it. And they just want to, 
You want to be part of it, you know, the hype around it's, it. It's the fear of missing out. It's yep. the fear of having an opportunity that's right there. You can get in. It's affordable. Like, this is the thing with a lot of things. Mm. These are affordable. Mm. Uh, most people have got 100, 120, 300 bucks, you know, like whatever. Yep. They can get in and they say, hey, and this could take off. Yeah, and they find a coin. They do a little bit of research. And that, like me, I was finding... The like, only reason I bought... I had a mate that had... Um, uh, I won't say the exact figures, but let's say he had half a million dollars. He put it in the crypto. It grew to five million dollars, and that was the figure. Then he took it all out, and then crypto started taking off. So he put it all back in again, and then he lost um, three million, um, and that was New Zealand dollars. So it, it basically went up like a roller coaster, and he was pretty. I don't know how to say it. He's pretty chuffed that he was pretty successful, and he's doing really well, but. The money he borrowed was his mother's and father's life savings, and he begged them to trust him. Mm. So I asked him, you know, do you feel suicidal? And he said, yes, he wants to end his life. He was devastated. But now he's actually got $2 million out of crypto, and he's actually now looking back what's happened over the last year. He's actually, I said, you've done pretty well for yourself. So you were want to commit Harry Carey over there, and now look at you. You actually did well getting your money mm. out because you could have lost a whole lot. You know, that was interesting, listening to that yeah. story. <laughs> a long time ago, uh, about 20 years ago, I, I was really keen on, on investing and trying to, because like the share market, invest, you know, not in crypto, well, there was no crypto back then, right? Yep. But the share market, I, I thought, yeah, like it's an opportunity, the dot-com uh, boom at that time, everything. Yeah, Everybody had an idea for a, an internet business was trying to have um, an IPO, you know, you know, like to launch their company, mm. right? An initial public offering, drag in heap, heap, heaps of money and take off and become, you know, like millionaire. And a lot of them were really, really successful. Mm. And then it all went bust. Mm. But back then, I decided that I was going to learn all, all about it. So I went and got this massive book. It was a Bible of, of investing. And it was a guy who had, he, he had studied the share market for 20 years. Mm -hmm. 20 years. And you had to read <laughs> hundreds of pages to learn what he learned. You know what he learned? Is that there, there are people who fluke uh, companies like Apple or Microsoft or Coca-Cola or anything like that. There, there are legitimate people who become multi-millionaires by getting in on good stock before anybody's heard of it and, mm. and, and you just write it up. But what he actually worked out is that for the average investor, the, the best return you could get over the long term was actually stick your money in the biggest companies because the biggest companies are the most steady earners long time. And there are smaller companies that go up, they fly up, but whatever goes up quick usually yeah. comes down quick. And the bigger companies, yeah, it's not going to be a huge a huge return, but it's going to be a good steady return. But people don't want steady returns. You know, like if you've only got $100 to your name, mm. you know, and but, someone said, well, you, you can invest that and get a guaranteed 5%. So this is a good question, is why did Hyperverse get such traction? That's COVID. We're all used to using Zoom. People now are quite happy. I've got three meetings this week on Zoom, and people are quite happy to talk over Zoom. And also people were sitting at home thinking, well, I quite like working at home. I would like to have a passive income. So they go mm. out there, sell the passive income story to people. People get involved. Um, and also people are incredibly lonely. They have no one to talk to, and that's why these communities, that's why I talked about the parallel of the religious cult, and then you've got the parallel of the communities. But as soon as you stand up to the community and say, I think this is a scheme, they just kick you out. Toxic positivity. Boom. <laughs> you would. <laughs> toxic, toxic. I, I've watched a lot of your videos, and, and mm. I've watched a lot of those online meetings and a lot of the talk is really positive and it's uplifting and it is motivational and look to be perfectly honest if, if you're pretty balanced the last thing you want to hear is a lot of negative talk about anything really all right 
you could go along, maybe you're not feeling that great, maybe you haven't had you know, like a great mm. week, but Saturday, come Saturday afternoon, yeah. all right, we're going to get that shot in the arm of adrenaline, mm. all right, and we're going to get this rah, 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 everything's great, kumbaya, you know, right? and it's a big uh, togetherness buzz, and you're all on this boat together, you know, and you're tenet. riding it out. Well, well, <laughs> the Titanic, before it hit an iceberg, was a fantastic ride. Everybody wanted yeah. to be on it when it hit an iceberg. Even when it hit the iceberg, mm, people, just people didn't think mm. it was going to sink. Yeah. You know, there yeah. was no big rush to get on a lifeboat, was there? Bloody cold out there. Mm. <laughs> you see, what, what, what the real big thing I'm getting at the moment is, like, I've been listening to, the uh, last three or four weeks, I've been listening to Brenda Chunder, and um and Keith uh, Keith has been away, and they are basically now saying that Hyperverse was a victim. They got exploited. Uh, they've done really well for people who went on the voyage and the hyper uh, on the um, what do they call that? What we just talked about Titanic. Titanic. And they've had a voyage of a lifetime, and they should remember that voyage of a lifetime before it hit the iceberg and killed all those people and it sunk to the bottom of the ocean. That's what she said. Yeah, the saying. interesting thing was is that for most people that voyage was virtual. Uh, right. It was virtual yeah. Yeah. because, you know, it's not like you had a wallet in your hand all right, and you put a hundred bucks in that wallet and then one day it's 105 and then it's 110 or 115, 20, da, 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 da. All, all you did, you went online and you saw your rewards that were adding up. It was a number on a screen. Mate, it's, it's the Titanic. Because you think, have you been on a cruise? I no, I haven't. Yeah, I went with my mate. It was a bit weird, but I did. It was James, James, my old flatmate. We were last minute holidays. What did we do? A cruise? We did. Went on a New Year cruise for singles, and, we were, <laughs> and, and there was about <laughs> seven people on the ship, two and a half thousand people at the single. But what we sure, did, we were on the right video for this. Yeah, one. Yeah, you know, <laughs> but what what you do is you go into the casino and everyone wins, and everything you do is on your tab, and what the cruise ship does it wants you to have a fantastic time because you're on the phone back communicating to the, the people on the land yeah. telling them i'm having a fantastic cruise book yourself for a Wish cruise you were here yeah book yourself for a cruise give us the money and the cassette and the ship's going well well we've got 10 more ships lined up here we can just keep this going just keep booking the trips and paying for it and in the meantime everyone on that ship is winning 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 but it's only when it gets to dock and people are at the counter saying, well, I've won. Can you give me the money? They open the safe and it's been looted by all the VIP fives. <laughs> 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 and, then, and then the whole, the back office has been stripped bare and they've taken all the, the workers, the sales team, and said, we're going to put them on another ship that's bigger over here. Well, that looting there... Is like when we come back, you know, like to all those tiers and how much they're taking off all the memberships that were coming in, you know, like and all all the rewards, right? That looting is actually happening. It's happening because everybody who's invited you in didn't do it necessarily for your well being. They did mm. it for their rewards, mm. and if they got enough rewards, right, and withdrew something out, because most of these people have been around a long time. This is mm. what I find really interesting now, is yeah. that the people, all the people that are, are pushing people toward hypernation and staying on board and being positive are the ones who have made the money. Mm. And they're keeping the hype going. They're that's, keeping that's the hype the going. Like. They were still yeah. selling Hyperverse memberships well after all the withdrawal shut. Like, mm. Got, Hello. Got to tell you a funny one, um, and don't ask me if this is real because it is. But Keith Williams on a video which is on my Odyssey channel, you can get that from the top of my YouTube, and it's a video I just did because some of the videos I can't put on YouTube anymore, so I'm putting them on Odyssey, which is a on the blockchain, and they can't get them off. Anyway, so there was a video there, and Keith was saying thirty minutes in that Keith was saying that he went to Dubai for his holiday, and he had a meeting with an old friend that he'd known for twenty five years, and he was asking him um, whether he, how he felt about the last ten months being in hyperverse, and this old friend was um, was basically insinuating that he wish he never left hyperverse. This is the picture that Keith was doing. Mm. I have Kalpesh Patel's. Uh, WhatsApp app and I sent him messages and he's wrote back to me once and I wrote to him and said 
30 minutes in, in this video, Keith Williams says that you have got together with him. Is it true? And he writes back, what? <laughs> like, he just couldn't believe it, you know? And I think that's the stupid things that Keith Williams will do. He just makes up any story to give them, you know, they'll just tell people anything. And then, same with Brenda Chanda. Um, what's the other one I got the other day from, oh, Sam Lee. So I've been, if you go to this new thing, this stable Deo thing, there's five of them on the homepage of the website. And they all link off to their LinkedIn profile. So when I was doing my first investigation, I was following all the profiles back, looking at to see the activity that they've got. Sam Lee, which I know I've been, I've sent him a friend request 10 months ago. And I followed his profile. He's got no activity. It's just a dead LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so um, I got on the YouTube thingy and did a video basically saying that, um, you know, they promote, you know, talking about their LinkedIn profile. Next thing, Sam Lee accepts me as a friend on LinkedIn. I was like, what? <laughs> and, then, and then I get this message, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and then I tell people about it and they go, oh, are you sure it's the real Sam Lee? And I go, I've been watching the profile for so long. And I'm thinking, how silly is this? So what I like from that story is the fact that these guys are actually aware and I'm actually part of the game, and you are too. We're, we're part of the circus performance. I've got... A, I'm, I'm yeah. the support crew. <laughs> yeah. But even like um, Andreas from one of the other things, he's threatened to do all sorts of things to me. And then I've got another network of people that have been also threatened by I, these guys. I, I just hope it's not going to happen tonight. No, no, no. Yeah, no, the killing. <laughs> yes. I, <laughs> I'm a bit squeamish around but, blood, But all Danny. these guys are full of shit. They say they're going to do this. They threaten this. And it's just like a rinse and repeat. Um, like one of them found, oh, I won't even go into that one. But I mean, they're just, they'll do anything to keep the hype going. Yeah, I do find, I do find, you know, you know like I don't, I, I, I don't know anybody well enough to make any judgment on anything. But I have seen things and, and all, all I can do is to say, would I have been involved in any of this from what I've seen? There's nothing. There's absolutely nothing that would get me involved in any of this. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, I wouldn't even say it's too good to be true. It's just, it just sounds total nonsense. People think that I'm, yeah. invo I'm involved in it. Um, they think I've invested in it and I'm sore about it. And that makes me really laugh. Oh, so this is a whole series of sour grapes. Yeah. This guy here, uh, uh, I won't read his name out, Yeah, has been locked up uh, and fined for ripping off $120 million of people. And um, I've been, he's been deleting my messages, but he, he, I sent him my article in the New York Times, <laughs> and he goes, congratulations. <laughs> and this, oh, you know, this guy, I've been, um, I want him to come on and do an interview with me. But this is the part that I think that makes it even more, I mean, why would you care what a guy in New Zealand says about you if you were running a genuine business? Look, I think, I think there's a really interesting point there that if, if you became aware of this person that was highly critical, mm. and, uh, particularly if they've basically extended an invitation, you know, you know like, come online and tell your side of the story. Mm. Why would you not do it? You know, like, I mm. guess there's a lot of people who don't really want to go onto YouTube. Well, this guy but, wants to tell his story to me. That's what he said. Yeah. I want to tell you the truth. Because he was originally um, connected to Hyper Fund. And Sam Lee and Ryan Jew gave him $200,000 worth of tokens. And he was using that to welcome people into the hyper fund and the hyper capital at the time. Yeah. Then he started taking cashing. He, he was defrauding the company. So and then Sam Lee, because there's pictures of him got and hugging Sam Lee, and finished up that he ripped Sam Lee off allegedly. And now, um, but then that's what Sam Lee says. But this guy says, no, no, that's not what happened. I want to tell the truth. So he's has agreed to come onto a podcast with me. Um, on the 17th of month gone by and now he's got busy again but that's the first bit of communication I've got with him here's yeah. a question for you <clears throat> if if any of the major players from any cryptocurrency scheme were to contact you mm -hmm. and said hey I don't agree with anything that you say yeah um, and I'd like to set the record straight 
Would you give them a fair hearing? It's too right. Yep. And uh, there's another side of it which people don't probably realise. I don't think any of these guys will ever get caught. I don't think they'll ever get prosecuted. I think they'll get away with it. Because there's no... the the you, Everyone's been warned not to get involved. Everyone's used a unregulated currency to invest in. They are basically saying, I'm going to play the game. And they have put their money in. They have listened to people who are liars, cheaters and thieves. And now they want the government to do something about it. And mm. I think the government said, well, we've got systems in place. And if you go onto the FFA, I think it's FFA, financial regulated something or other. Yeah. Uh, they put warnings out there. And if you go onto Google and search, you'll find me and you. <laughs> but, uh, but I mean, so why do people do it anyway and then expect people to step in? So then they go, oh, but that's not fair. They must, but, you know, when I interviewed a couple of people, they had taken out their, their pension funds and they had put that into a Ponzi scheme. Now, now that got me. I know okay. why they did it. Now, that, that <laughs> got me when I, I saw um, that presentation. And uh, unlike you, I don't mention names, or <laughs> but you can work it out. Alpha. All right. If you, <laughs> if, <laughs> if, if you create a video and you basically um, go out there and, and compare a crypto scheme to a pension fund in a positive way, i.e., don't invest in your pension fund. Get your money out of your pension fund and go put it in this cryptocurrency because you'll make more money and it's safer. And, you know, here's, here's all the... That, that's... Yeah, I, I can't support that. And, and that mm. did make me pretty angry when I saw mm. that because I'm thinking a lot of people... Um, who 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 may be critical thinking isn't their strong suit, mm. you know? And, yeah. and, right, and it, are in a situation where maybe they've worked hard all, all their life, they've got a bit of money that they can look forward to when they retire, but it's not, you know, like earth-shattering. Mm. Mm. And they get this um, kind of pseudo-science um, view of the world, which... Is basically designed just to get people involved in mm. the scheme. Um, to hell with the consequences. Yeah, I thought that's pretty mm. low. Well, I saw Pinnicky Nuck. <laughs> he um, was preaching that uh, pen pension schemes were a Ponzi uh, pension scheme. Uh, the pension the pension was a Ponzi scheme. And he showed it's exactly the same. So what he was basically saying that they are a Ponzi scheme and the government's also running a Ponzi scheme. And, and then he was using scare tactics to tell people basically that their pension funds could disappear. But at the moment, in world history, especially in America, the people they're preaching to, I've never seen anyone, the government, saying, sorry, we've used all the pension funds. Yeah. No one's getting paid <laughs> out. But it, it just doesn't happen. You know, like, like there is a thing called a haircut. You know, which, yeah, I know, which doesn't, it's got no use for me this whatsoever. This is the most talked about part of my hairdresser. All right. And that's, you know, yeah. in, the, in, in the most extreme economic event, you know, mm. e even um, investments in a bank mm. can get shaved, all right, in, in the most extreme thing. It's called a haircut. But that basically, I, I don't know of that ever happening. Mm. You know, because a lot of the banks are, are supported. There have been little banks, uh, smaller banks that did collapse, you know, like, uh, well, and some uh, larger investment agencies. But generally speaking, if yeah. you, you had a look at legitimate mainstream um, investment institutions mm. and how often they collapse compared to a crypto scheme, you know, mm. we're talking... Uh, multiples more crypto schemes are going to fall over than any legitimate investment well, agency. Um, Sam Lee's Stable Deo, they have on the front of their webpage that they are part of Citibank. Right, that's and I've heard of Citibank. I think that's a reasonably big bank. 13th biggest bank in the world. Wow. And people I know have contacted Citibank, go, hey, are you guys involved in the yeah. Ponzi scheme? And would you believe? They're not. But the fact that they've got the balls to go out there, they're basically telling everyone they're unstoppable, which is amazing. Back to our Ponzi scheme for a second before you start. Before you wait, before he says one thing here, I will say <laughs> that in the in the last few weeks, months that I've been watching your videos and other 
crypto related stuff. Yeah. Man, I I'm really dubious about many websites that I go on to, even yeah. emails, and it's actually made me double check anything online. I got scammed twice in the last month, and I'll tell you the second one that I haven't told you yet. Um, the pension fund guy. Now, this is the, the the people are saying, why do these people invest in these Ponzi scheme? But they, even if it looks shady, the, surely they must have been just greedy. Now, I won't say the names, but the two people I spoke to basically didn't, like you said earlier, didn't have much money for their pension fund. And I and one of them was on a sickness benefit, really sick. And um, I think that these guys, out of desperation, take their twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, put it into this get-rich-quick scheme, hoping that this is going to be the opportunity to have a bigger nest egg. Yeah. Because $20,000 ain't anything to live on. And 60000 that's a bit better. But it's still, and um, I think it was out of desperation rather than out of, you know, greed. Well, when I started my journey, I thought everyone was greedy bastards and they're just trying to triple their money and they don't care about the people they're stealing it from because they know it's a Ponzi scheme. But when I've seen it happen, like the guy I spoke to, one that comes to mind, it's the one in the article actually, and he, um, he said to me, he said, no, I just trusted it because a friend that he doesn't, who's ghosted him now, who also would have, imagine this, you come along to me and I said, give me your $20,000. You just got paid $4,000 that you could take out straight away mm. and put in your back pocket. And, you know, you're just going to be mates with you until you realise I've scammed you, and then you're going to say, I don't want anything else to do with you. That's what's continuously happening. I, I think there's, like, two possibilities. Well, there's endless possibilities, but there's two definite possibilities here, right? There's people that are completely naive about what a realistic return mm on investment is mm. um, and just basically um, if you're in a, a major hedge fund, hedge fund uh, 15 to 20 percent is a fantastic return per annum um, mm. heard that the other day by the way yep. uh, but, but the other thing the other mentality is the mentality of a gambler right and the gambler uh, doesn't mind having risk Doubles because up. they want the buzz. Right. Yeah. 20,000 sure thing, pension fund, no buzz. There's no risk, you know. Mm. And like 20,000 may or may not be a lot of money, depending on what your circumstances are and what country you're in. But if someone came along and said, we can give you 3x or 4x, now there's a bit of a buzz, and now they're thinking, well, 60000 or 80000 or there was one scheme that I saw 10x. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, 10x? No, that's, I, that's saw, ridiculous. I saw um, 10x in seven days. Okay. Oh, <laughs> honestly, I'm reading this thing, because I've got uh, a list of 50 like Ponzi scheme websites, and I went through them all one day. It's actually in my videos again. I think 50 plus Ponzi schemes, scam demic, blah, blah, blah. And one of them I got to, and I'm reading it. I'm reading it twice, and it says um, you can put in $50,000 and get 10x your money in 10 days. Just to flip this around the other way. Yeah, do okay. You wanna, do you want to know the address? No, no. Dub, dub, dub. <laughs> Danny. <laughs> to flip this around the other way, okay, is that if, if you're getting three, four, five, ten X, somebody's paying you that. Mm. Like, like it's not coming from nowhere. Someone is saying, if, if I can lend, right, at, right, if I can borrow your money, okay, yeah, mm. but, right, because that's essentially what it is. If I can borrow your money, mm. I can use it somewhere else to, be to get some amazing return, right, mm. which I couldn't get without your money. Mm. Yeah, all right? I need your money. But I can get some amazing return. I can get, like if I'm paying you 3x, I must be getting 4 or 5x, mm. okay? And I, I'm going to pay you so much money because I'm getting such a massive return. We haven't seen anything that any of these crypto schemes are – Doing any business activity. However, Hyper Bond, no one knows the true value of Hyper Bond, but um, <laughs> apparently that Hyper Bond <laughs> may enable you to be able to buy a planet. A planet. And then you can chop your planet up into sellable portions and Excellent. sell that to people. 
that's what because that's but no one knows the value yeah. of is this elon musk involved in this no no it? I, it's I, not elon mars musk, by i actually the way. i tell you i watched a video of elon musk for an hour and a half the other day and it was one of him uh just recent and, and it was he was talking about something interesting about how he's got twitter now which is quite funny and how mm. he's gonna and i actually went to pay eight dollars to be on twitter because he said <laughs> something that <laughs> if, if you <laughs> pay eight dollars verified with a blue tick yep you are going to be your content's going to be preferenced over people who don't pay. Yeah, yeah. And, and also, he said that for content creators like ourselves, that he's actually going to make it that their videos are monetized and they get. So I, the yeah. way Elon has grown everything else, I think Twitter could be another alternative to YouTube. Yeah. I, Do we I, just lose our channels I, to YouTube? Well, well Those no. Two brothers I was are watching at Marcus <laughs> Brownlees, who, yeah. who is a major YouTuber, and he, he was talking about Twitter and Elon Musk Has he Musk been on the New stuff. York Times? He, he probably has oh, been okay. on the New York Times. Yeah. In fact, Marcus <laughs> Brownlees actually visited the Tesla uh, company and had an interview with Elon Musk. So this was yeah. actually um, an interesting insight. So is that the one where he's he, in front of the glass screen? Because I think I might have watched that. There was a glass screen there, something, in, in that video. It I wasn't for COVID, exactly it was for another was. reason. I can't remember what that. Oh, I just wondered, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah I don't know, because mm. I, I thought they were walking along. That's a good point. I mm. thought they were walking along side by side. Maybe that mm. was pre-COVID. I don't know. But mm. um, Anyway, Elon. Well, well, you take Elon Musk yeah. and Tesla. Okay, right now Tesla um, had to borrow a huge amount of money to get their gigafactories up and going and their robotics and their electric cars and their battery technology and all that, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of people invested. None of those people who invested millions of dollars billions of dollars yeah, expected off. 3x, 4x or 5x yeah, from their money, yeah. right? And Elon Musk, who who was taking that money, who was using that money to develop a, a massive company, never promised three, four or five things for their yeah. money, but he still got investors. Why? Because it was legitimate, not without risk. Yeah. Not without risk, yeah. but it was legitimate. And I, I you know, like uh, somebody posted a comment on one of my thingies today, basically saying that Elon Musk's Tesla's is a Ponzi scheme. And I'm reading this, and I said to my mate Steve, I said, why would they say that? Like, why is that a Ponzi scheme? It's uh, not a Ponzi uh, scheme, uh, but but uh, Tesla and Amazon have, have in common that they actually got floated on an idea. Mm -hmm. And for a long, long time, it Amazon, wasn't a profitable uh, idea. Amazon's amazing for their story, isn't it? Because that was years. I did a website for a guy once who seriously wanted me to produce a website to take on Amazon. <laughs> yeah, I, took, I did take his money, and then he hired a girl that was to load up all the books he had at the time, and I, and I go, this is not going to work. But anyway, <laughs> we did have an Amazon go. <laughs> yeah, and I think, I think the interesting thing there, though, is that when those, when those companies floated... Mm. the first time a lot of people were investing on hope you know they were backing elon musk they were backing jeff bezos mm. and it was going to take off but it was actually based on legitimate business dealings yeah you know there was a tangible factory there was something that you if you turned up at amazon or you turned up at tesla you could see where your money had gone you turn up at hope where is hyper nation yeah, <laughs> if you want to visit hibernation, where do you go? It's you know, um, um, there, mate. See, he's, that's it, um, it's there. That's Keith Williams just coming home. And Is it? You can't uh, even email it. Well, you and can't call it up. This picture behind us, actually, that was. Or you can't even see the metaverse. Well, there's there, mate. Well, apart from that one. Um, that picture there. It was actually made by a company called uh, by Dan Studios, and we must give them credit for it. If you go on to Hyperverse today and watch any of their promo videos, they are actually using that same video that you see behind me. Now, the people that made that video contacted me 
because they also wanted to know who was behind Hyperverse because they wanted to sue their asses off. Sorry, Rob, is it going to your channel or mine? I'm, I'm just... <laughs> Yours. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they uh, they're lovely people because they haven't they seen what I'm doing, and they uh, and it's still online. So if a company has blatantly copied somebody else's material to give people a representation of the metaverse, um, and and just blatantly done it. Now there was another company called um, another company I'll talk about. They went to a company called Fantasy. Now Fantasy is a high end. A uh, company does prestigious... Sports and things, isn't it? Yep, yeah, and they do amazing... They stole their video off their YouTube channel, remixed it, telling the world that Fantasy is so proud to have this new company on board, and they like prestigious companies, and they basically use this video like they had produced it, and they didn't know anything about it. And the young guy I interviewed um, about three weeks ago contacted Fantasy and said, did you know that this company has been using your video um, and remixed it? And they went, oh, my God, they didn't know about it. So then um, they tried, it was on Vimeo, and it's still on Vimeo today. And this company owns the video that's been remixed, can't get it off. And the guy's still using it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. So is that, un, it's unethical... <laughs> But I think what you just said about Elon Musk, even Amazon, Amazon's probably the one that people could say, oh, we don't know if it's actually going to happen. But it happened. But you, like could, still, yeah. but you could still see where they were, going to, they were spending the money, right? Yeah, and if you go back to when those um, started, you know, like there's a massive capital investment. Capital investment, if you don't know, is where... Like you're not actually making your product, you're you're making the building that you might make the in, product infrastructure, in. Infrastructure, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's the infrastructure. It's like yeah, like you might want to uh, debate bread, right? Mm. Your your main thing is going to be the oven and the tables. You know where you're going to mix all the dough. Yeah, you, know, you know, like in your mixers, but. The, the massive money is building the the factory, the trucks that to transport the stuff. Yeah, all all that stuff's yep. in it, and the right? alliance with the shops who are going to yeah. sell and it. And while they were building all that, they they were hemorrhaging money, yeah. <laughs> like absolutely hemorrhaging money. But they are doing it in, in a in a way that they're trying to build it as fast as they can to get the infrastructure up as fast as they can, and in the scale that they need to actually produce a product that's going to be able to pay all the money back. The thing with all these cryptocurrency, I was going to say some naughty word there, but <laughs> is that you can't see anything. You can't mm. see the developers. You can't see the, uh, the metaverse. You can't see the income. All you can see is memberships, NFTs, cryptocurrencies and you know it's all virtual everything's virtual mm. you don't even know who's the elon musk who put together hypernation mm. who's the jeff bezos that put together hyperverse yeah, no, who crazy. who you don't yeah. even know and who's if, running it and if you watch the amount of videos i have i actually see them in these leadership meetings saying this may happen or what could they what they could do is perhaps they will bring out this or what they could do is this and then it's almost like they're throwing out a line yeah. all right and what could happen is the bait and they're seeing how many people on this on this meeting yep. bite on it oh that seemed to land pretty good all right we'll use that and then corporate implement it yeah and Who, i think who's who, corporate well, the corporate are uh, the people. I believe it's Keith Williams now. You said that ages ago. Yeah, I I did not say anything like you that. Said you I don't think say anything. That, yeah. I do not. I never say have thought like there's that. a corporate, but I never even believe that Sam Lee and Ryan Drew is behind it. And I, honestly, it blew me away when Sam Lee um, turned up a couple about three or four weeks ago. That's why when he's alive, but, I um, saw yeah. Sam Lee on a few interviews. He looks quite clued up. Yeah, I don't think so. I'm, I'm not too sure that I I had actually given him any money of mine. You know, like well, he, when he said, "What do I want?" I was sitting there going, <laughs> one, "One million dollars." <laughs> well, somebody somewhere said, yeah. "What do you want?" So, yeah, and I'm yeah. Going, oh wow. So um, yeah, I don't know, but I think um, I I originally looked at Sam Lee as somebody who was theoretically 
um, thrown under the bus because whenever I saw him on an interview, it was always talking about the blockchain, uh, blockchain global and yeah. his company, and he never actually really said the word metaverse or well, I did talk about. Well, I don't think he did, but never mentioned hyperverse or hyper fund. It was never. And then one day he said it. And I'm sitting there going, oh, my God, he's actually admitted he's connected to it somehow. And then I thought, oh, well, maybe he's not been thrown under the bus. Because even, oh, okay. even in the Hyperverse's um, opening, uh, he popped in as a guest speaker on a Zoom call. And he, never, he talked about the blockchain. And it was like he was asked to go along to a presentation and do a talk about how the blockchain works. And he'd come along, and then all of a sudden he was wrapped around this virtual world he couldn't see, and they were doing a presentation about a Ponzi scheme. Um, but then when I saw him come out with Stable Deo, and I'm sitting there thinking, oh, my God, what's this guy doing? He's coming out of hiding. Now, why do they, those guys, why don't they keep their heads down? Like, theoretically, Blockchain Global alone had taken $50 million from Australian investors, and they've taken the funds out of that and done something with it. Now, he must have got some of that money. How much money do you need to keep your head down and shut the up? You know what I mean? And then same with Keith, Keith Williams, uh, not Keith Williams, Kalpesh Patel. He's in Dubai at the moment. I will, you know? I don't know. I don't know. And I don't know whether any of these people have done anything un untoward. All, all I know is that what they're doing and what they believe in and what they um, advocate for certainly mm. isn't anything that rings um, true. Well, it's not anything that I, I can look at and grasp with my reasonably logical mind and say, mm. yeah, that sounds good, let's jump on board. Yeah, so why do people jump on board? That's probably the biggest question. I, 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 as I said to you before, before we started recording, I think hypernation is going to get traction. I think this, because... Yeah, yep. now you did say that, and, and to be perfect... Yeah. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, um, it, I, I reckon for any American viewers, it's it's about 110 degrees in this room at the moment. Yeah, it's pretty hot. <laughs> we can open the window. And my weight loss program yeah. is skyrocketing ahead. <laughs> but you're talking about hyper nation. Mm. I, I have to say, from what I've seen, I, I am so turned off by it mm. that I, I can't, like, I, I just cannot fathom that anybody would be involved. I say that for a couple of reasons, because when I first started watching your videos um, several months ago now, in fact, it is quite a long time ago when you started yeah, these. Yeah, I think 10 months I saw something flash up today, and I was thinking, oh, my goodness, is that 10 months ago? Yeah. I, I can't remember what it was, but I'm thinking... Well, I suppose it is really. I I was listening to like I I didn't actually know who they were, but it turns out that it was Keith Williams and Kalpesh Patel, mm. and I thought very charismatic presenters. To mm. be perfectly honest, didn't buy a word of what they were saying. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, not that I, I knew anything about it. It just wasn't anything that resonated with me that I would want to get involved. But I did think very good presenters and quite motivational and inspirational, almost aspirational. Mm. That, that, yeah, but making claims that I thought, well, that's, that's I th I think pretty that, pie in the sky stuff. But now, yeah. mm. like when I hear the hypernation stuff, I think there's nothing there. Like, like, like there's nothing mm. at all that would get me. Well, not even get me involved. There's another layer, though, and that's the yeah. part that makes me think this will work, which is I, really I crazy. I think people are chasing losses. I, I think they've they've made an investment, and there's a cognitive bias at play here mm. that I think Ooh, that people... Yeah, that's a big <laughs> word. Can't spell it, yeah. but um, I only just say it. But there's a cognitive bias here that if people have made a decision and they've spent money, they don't want to admit to themselves that they've made a mistake. Yeah, I can't. I struggle to get people to interview who had lost big money. I had a guy that lost one hundred and eighty grand. Yeah, like like yep. if you if yep. if you're going to if if you've lost money, I'm I'm a gambler, unfortunately. But I know that if I've lost money, the last thing I want to do is to admit that I made a mistake gambling. Mm. And I think that people who have lost money um, 
But Don't you, want you, to admit it. You did win on the Melbourne Cup. A couple I of did win on the Melbourne Cup. I had a dollar each way on the second and third horse. Um, $11. Yeah, gosh. <laughs> I, I, know, I was, I was stoked. Yeah. I got $112 yeah. actually. Rob's got to do it. Talking? Hold Rob accountable if you want to hear Rob's version of the Melbourne Cup. It's brilliant. <laughs> I want him to do a, a YouTube video. I've never heard anyone tell a story about the Melbourne Cup. And if you don't know anything about the Melbourne Cup, um, did you know that the it's the race that a lot of horse people don't want to be in because there's handicaps and the the best horses that have previously won all the races actually are weighted down. And and usually never race in the Melbourne Cup. The Melbourne Cup is actually a horse race. It's, it's um, probably as famous in Australasia as the Kentucky Derby or Epsom Derby is yeah. elsewhere. Yeah. But I worked yes. in a supermarket once and it was busy and then when the Melbourne Cup came on, it was empty. Everyone was watching the Melbourne the Cup. The race that stops the nation. It does, it does. Anyway, what we're saying, oh, so hibernation, why will it get traction, right? Why well, do I say yeah, it will yeah, it get traction? Yeah, because I, I think the only thing that I've seen that it's got going for it mm. is so many people that have lost their money in Hyperverse um, have got that little um, hook, which is whatever their, um, and I don't even know what you'd call it, their rewards or, or, the, or their balance in Hyperverse, mm. and they're thinking, well, if I stay in Hyperverse, Hyperverse is dead, yep. so this is worth nothing at all. And there's nothing sure in life about, there's no sure yeah. investment in life. Yeah, but if I can use this some way to get a discounted NFT box yep. going into Hypernation, well, I might as well do that. Because then I haven't lost everything. But actually, I think you have lost everything. Well, it's fourth, and you're spending fight. good money after bad. Mm. That's that's my view. But you, mm. you reckon you've got a different take on this. Yep. Um, it's it the, better be good. Well, the NFTs are all, at the moment, being marketed. So I bought NFTs. I bought a comic. I stayed up to 3 o'clock in the morning. I sat there with my phone. I went, bye, 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 bye. And there were 60,000 comics sold in two minutes. And I got one. That one seven dollar comic went up to um, thirty bucks, and I could have put it back, but I hang on to it. Mm -hmm. And these are NFTs. And I finished up. I bought a ultra rare comic the other day that at one point would have been selling for a thousand and fifty dollars, and that today is worth eighteen dollars, and I paid twenty two for it. Because <laughs> it, so there's two things happening at the moment. You've mastered this investment strategy, right? So hibernation is spending untold money on billboard advertising. Well, they were. No, they are. Oh, they are. Right, it's right still now, going. It, I've got photos on my phone of yeah. um, Pinnaki Nark standing in front of a, <laughs> um, a billboard in the train station with the the big hitchhiker guide. So a Hitchhiker of the stars. Yep. So all these young gamers, because yeah. if you look at any of these videos that you're watching, everybody in those videos is 50 and above. Yeah. Crypto is for young people who know better than the rest of the world. Why aren't these young people embracing these Ponzi schemes? Because us older people are trying to catch up with the technology. Smarter. I don't think so. But um, so now they're attracting people who want to buy NFT. Now, if I was at a railway station or I was at Times Square, because they had one of these in Times Square, I think it was a million dollars. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. I would look at this thing and go, what is this hitchhiker of the stars? And I can come in here and I go to the C Quest or it's a C platform, like an exchange. Oh, yeah, yes. And you can buy NFTs. And behind the NFT, there's a, a, a metaverse plan structure membership. But I can buy this NFT if I want to. And people will think, oh, well, 100 bucks, 120 bucks, I'll buy this. And now there's billboard advertising in countries that I didn't even know Hyperverse were pushing. Mm -hmm. So... Just like the Jehovah's Witnesses, they used to go and Bible bash in New Zealand and Australia and America and all the European countries. They now go off to the third world countries. And I, I just got an email today from a really serious lady who's going to be on my podcast, and she has been fighting these Ponzi schemes in Ghana. And all those poor third world countries are actually the ones that are hopeful and that desperation. Just like my mate who put $20,000 of his pension fund in there, it's all he had, he was desperate to get rich. He knew he's not going to retire much mm. on $20,000. I might as well throw it and see if I can get three times the investment, make it $60,000. That was his gamble. And the same with these Ghana people, with people in these third world countries. So there's Amy. He travelled to nine 
He did a world trip, but he only went to nine countries. He doesn't know there's more than nine countries in the world. Are there? Hmm. He, so he was on a campaign to get, go out to all these third world countries. And he was in Ghana, mm. preaching hyperverse. Okay. So you've got, and I reckon all this billboard advertising will introduce people to buying a simple NFT. They will get brainwashed into thinking that there's more to it. You know, there's a bigger picture. And they, because it's like these leadership meetings, I watch them, they flog, they flog something about three weeks earlier. The next week they talk about it again. And then the, the, the following week they announce it as an actual. And in the meantime, everyone's got groomed along the way. And I think that yeah. repetition is NFT training. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm still there. What is it's it? A bit of fluff. No, it's a bit of fluff. There you go. People will see that. And I think this is a poor, low quality production. He had a bit of hair there. Low quality. It might have grown. We've been going budget. for a while. It this might have really. Budget. It might have grown while we're sitting there. <laughs> grown. I think it's grown. It's right. fallen off. It was long. It was more fluff than human. Oh, um, right. It could have come out from somewhere. Okay. Um, yeah. So I just think that they well, they're well, going to go I, to a different audience well, with the same rinse and repeat. If if you if anybody is still watching this, and seriously, you need a life if you're still watching this. Mm. But if you are, mm. I watched a video the other day, and it was. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Who's he? Facebook. He's got a bit CEO. He's got Meta. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they've <laughs> actually changed Facebook's name from Facebook to Meta. Oh, well, and, that, that and proves that the metaverse is real. Well, well, actually, this this is the interesting thing that I thought was really fascinating. Mm. That they are making uh, making a massive investment in did the you say metaverse. Mating? I probably did, but yeah. I meant they they the are making a massive investment in their metaverse, and this is the whole thing, ladies and gentlemen. So who owns the metaverse? There's not a metaverse. Did I just take there's the punch metaverse? Or? Is this is the whole yeah. point? And when I was listening to Mark Zuckerberg, they they are making this um, metaverse where basically you could well look. Go watch the video, but I, I will tell you my very naive version of it, mm. and that is that you can actually go into the metaverse, and I think they were talking about headsets that you can wear, so that you know there's what augment, augmented reality and virtual reality, and you can actually walk around and interact with other people uh, in the metaverse. But what what I thought when I watched that mm. is that. This is a a proper virtual world mm. that Facebook, one of the biggest companies in the world, are investing millions, if not billions, of dollars into. Yeah. Um, that you need these expensive headsets. They're too expensive, you know, like for most people to have at the moment, but they are available for other things, for games and stuff. But even even if Hyper Nation had to think about which one we're up to. Even if hypernation was real, mm. even if this was all legitimate, what's their platform? They're competing. Yeah, they're they're, mm. com they're not on Facebook's metaverse. They're competing. Mm. So you've you've got this this Rodeo Drive, right? Right. Mm. This massive um, street with all of these massive companies on, mm. right? Who are all getting on the metaverse, you know, the virtual world um, platforms, they're creating their own, right? And this little tiny thing called hypernation oh, it's disgusting. is supposed to be creating oh. its own metaverse to be of the same quality, to have NFTs, to have mm. planets, to have um, virtual real estate. There's going to compete, and this is the whole thing. But they have got three months to come out with a white paper. Well, they, they've got, I thought, that their yellow paper, which is the actual technical... Um, made up bullshit. Totally made up bullshit. Stuff of how it's going to work doesn't even come up for a year. How far, how far along is Facebook going to be mm. by the time their yellow paper comes out? And the thing about Facebook, I mean, it's more common sense for Facebook because, I mean, uh, you were talking about Amazon and we're talking about Tesla and those companies growing. And then I was going to say to you, which I didn't, which I'm going to say now, is what tech company can you think of that may have piled a whole lot of money into something and never eventuated? I mean, like Microsoft, I, you know, did they? how much money did investment did that take? Did it grow like snowballs? 
um, you know, as there are other platforms out there, and, and Facebook's or Instagram or whatever they are, they have got a good story to tell. Now, Zuckerberg's been going for 20 years. I think 2006. Yeah. I think. Yeah, it was 2003 or 2006. It was a quiz question. I was quite surprised. 16 years. Yeah. So look at what that the, what they have learned along the way. And if anyone's going to pull all this, and then what are they actually proposing to do? Like you said, it's like a a, a virtual reality game. Yeah. It's not, well, I, th- I think the key point for anybody who, who's a little bit confused out there, and hopefully everybody's confused, because if you're not confused with Danny and I, then we don't really know what more we can do. Right. But the thing is, is that it's not uh, like uh, hypernation. Uh, uh, it's not like hypernation yeah. are actually buying into Facebook's metaverse. Hi, um, hi, hypernation are creating their own metaverse, yeah, competing with yeah. Facebook's one. So who's going to go on it? Like, got... like, no one's going to go on it because everybody's on, on the big one. There's an elephant. You can't hear it, but there's an elephant that just screamed. So what what's happening here, ladies and gentlemen, no one's talking about the elephant of the room, and the hyperverse hasn't got any, hypernation hasn't got any infrastructure or any plan they have just told people nothing. Yeah, nothing. And if they have, guys, I'm nothing. sorry, but please come on my, well, come on your uh, podcast and tell us what you have got. Oh no, this right. is your video. I'm just here to help you. Oh, you don't want this one now? No, <laughs> no I don't want to go anywhere near. Yeah. Uh, my name's not even Rob. <laughs> Rob. Yeah, it's but, something else. You you Tom, just Tom. make it up. Oh, you know? right. I, I'm an yeah. avatar. I'm not yeah. even a real person. I'm a figment of Danny's Actually, imagination. you're Mr. H. You're everyone. You're the alpha and the the omega of of. And talking about Mr. H, can you get this? He's going to the he's going to the UK. Have you seen that latest where, video? Where did you show me he was somewhere? He was. Um, I looked at it. It was a green screen, but he's meant to be oh, in a couple was, of days' I time. It was real. Turning up on <laughs> London Bridge, and they've got because one of the videos I missed the most, and I did take it off my YouTube channel because I pinched all their videos and I didn't want to get in trouble. Is, um, you shouldn't say that. Or um, we'll scrub that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it doesn't. Well, they can't touch me now. I'm untouchable because I take them all off. See, oh my God, he touched me. Um, but was the one of Mr. He's H. Not real. I chopped up uh, eighty videos. I downloaded eighty videos of Mr. H. And I chopped them all up and put them back to back. And then I played them all on one big sequence. It took forty five minutes. And you could hear Mr. H.'s voices, mannerisms, and with those videos, I found out there was four Mr. H.'s. <laughs> and the one that is going to UK is looking completely different and talking like a Mickey Mouse clown. So it's now I'm saying there's five. So and then they come out and I, after I did my video, the next thing, uh, Mick Minute, he, um, <laughs> they start saying that Mr H is everyone and Mr H can be anyone. Yeah. So that's how they've that everything. That, I, I don't think they listen to my videos, but Mr H, if you are, I wouldn't mind an autograph. But it's a bit, but weird. Yeah, yeah, or a free mask. He, 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 he would look better in a mask. Mm. But it is, it is. Um, I just think. Um, so the if, sad... if you think you would look better in a mask, leave that in the comment below. All right. So if you took emotion out of the whole Ponzi scheme, hypernation, well, you wouldn't fun, be in it. You wouldn't be in. Well, you... it's like. You wouldn't be in it because for, there has has to be emotion that's going to drive you to want more money. What's on here? Okay, yep. yeah, right, right. Because they reckon money in itself isn't a motivator, but what you can do with the money. It's, right. So people out, out there must have all these big plans of what they're going to do with the money that probably you're not going to get. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I hope you didn't have big plans yeah. to do anything with the money that you were investing because you may not get that back. All right, so the, the interesting thing here was something interesting, which we didn't mention before, about the guy that put his pension fund in there. He initially put $2,000 in. And then, right. he, and then somehow he saw the money in the back end growing. He said he didn't take try taking it out or didn't even know how to get his money out. But because it was growing, he could see the interest, then he built faith in the system, and then he put it all in. And I, that's a typical telltale sign for any Ponzi scheme. People test the waters with a little... Me- that's why they have a $300 membership plan, to get you warmed up. And then you see... So my mate, Mark Gardner, which um, I do mention because I talked to him on the phone, even though we yelled at each other, and he tells me I was horrible to him. <laughs> um, he tells me that he put five grand in, got his five grand out, 
and the, the leftover money he reinvested, yeah. and he reckons he's now got a hundred and I think he said one hundred and fifty or one hundred and eighty thousand HU in Hyperverse. I I would be really interested to know if any of those people were to either come on your show or mm. or to leave a comment in the comments section below. That's what it's for, by the way. You know, like to be part of the conversation. Yeah, is. At the time when you realised that this investment of yours was growing, but at the time when you realised, actually, I may never see this money, mm. what did they think? Like, what was the feeling that they experienced at that time? Because, like, if you had, say, $2,000 in your bank account and you have been saving in there... Mm. Uh, is is your mentality different? Because you know that's real money. Like, you know, like mm. you know that's proper currency. Is because if I went to my bank and they wouldn't let me have my money if I wanted to take it out, I think I'd want to. In mm. fact, I can't actually say what I think I'd want to do to a teller who told me that. Mm. But I I think that I wonder if it's different between because a it's not real currency. It's it's virtual. It's online. You can't actually see the teller who's saying you can't take your money. Mm. Yeah, I wonder if that changes the mentality because I'd be I'd be fuming. I'd be fuming. Yeah. It must get really frustrating. I suppose they're you know kind of censored it all now. But on those meetings when. Like if you had a question about withdrawals that weren't happening, all right, you mm. basically got shut down and told yeah. you a negative. Fantastic. I, I got an e I can't, an email or a message from some lady today, and she was telling me that they've been trying to stop these third world countries, I can't find it, um, from you know, getting involved in Ponzi schemes. And she's going to come on my podcast. She's told me that they have uh, tracked 11 people that have committed suicide from being involved in Ponzi schemes and lost their money. Mm. And that's just what they've found. And people, you know. And I think people need to stop there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven. Oh. Real people. Yeah. Real people. That's not just a number. That's real people ended it. I wish I could find it. Because but, um, of how they felt. So it's just, um, you know... And, and, and yeah. that's what you're saying. You know, like yeah. I, I imagine if, if those figures of how many people were actually involved in Hyperverse in particular, yeah. which I, I can remember hearing that figure would be astronomical. How, how many people, you know, you know, like... Well, they say one and a half million, and that's not our stats, that's theirs. But then they talk about these multiple account things. Mm. So I don't know if those multiple accounts are individual people. But theoretically, each one of those accounts couldn't be in created unless somebody put in 300. And this is the other thing I don't know about. But theoretically, if I... Because at one point, I'd come along to Rob and say, look, I'm going to gift you a free membership to Hyperverse. I still don't understand how that works. Yep, so I give you a $1,000 membership. Yeah. And you sit there and you look at it. And then it, it, it um, compounds. Yeah. And then when you get a thousand dollars on top of your thousand dollar account, you take that out, you yeah. with, withdraw that, and you give it to me for the free membership. However, oh, so I give you back your investment. Um, yes, so it's free, no risk until you win. So you win, and then after that point that you've paid back, the you've got nothing to lose. But I needed your name. On um, oh, and then they would win. Because they would end up with their money back from that person. Yep. Plus, they would get 20% as well of that membership. Now it gets trickier. And if that person who, who they gifted the membership to actually drew anybody else, brought somebody else in, they'd get another 15%, et cetera, et cetera. Is that how it yep. like that? Now, you work the mess out on this, and this is pretty complicated for the folks that might not follow it. But I said to somebody the other day that, well, they were giving these free memberships. And I, and what they could, they couldn't get, the, they froze the money. So people couldn't get their money out of Hyperverse. However, yeah. you could buy new memberships with HU. 
So I'd go, let's stay there. Don't move. Got it. There, right. Just stop it, will you? Okay, so I couldn't get my money out of Hyperverse, but I could go and buy a new membership with my money, my rewards. So that was in there. <clears throat> okay, however, right. you could only, <clears throat> which I got told, you could only use 50% of that money, and that's where the hyperbond is getting similar. Right, and then you had to put extra in yep. to top it up. Yep, but then I put in 500, and I go to a gamble, and go, well, if I want to give Rob a free membership, I'm going to use 50% of my HU, boom, and I'm going to use 50% of my USDT. Now, I've made a shitload of money in Hyperverse, so I've got lots of USDT sitting there. I don't yep. mind forking out money. Now, I go to Rob, and I know Rob's a good boy. He's going to go and refer somebody else to it because Danny gave me a free account, and he's pushing me because he's gave me something free. You go sign up somebody else for $1,000, I get 200 back. But yep. in, the, in the meantime, time is traveling on. Your accounts... Well, you get 200 back because you created one for me as well. You get 15% of the next True. person. That's right. And yeah. that's where the 21 account structure, I think, worked. Because you'd be the one, you'd create 20 accounts. And this is what, you know, we did a video of Cal Peach showing his 77 accounts and how he's merging accounts down. But he was just strategically putting people in his team. So he was creating a team of 20 people. And then he was putting people he knew would build these teams in the right places. Yeah. So then if Rob is a, say if Rob's like, I own a business networking company and I've got 1,500 people that are in my networks. Now I'm, I'm a, he knows that Danny's good at networking. So Danny goes out there and recruits 50 people. Right. On the set, the first level. But, oh, which you know, meant, it's just an right. and that's why I think these ten thousand. So, if you were giving free memberships out, essentially, what you're doing is you're you you could be getting a person involved who wouldn't normally get involved because either they haven't got the money or they don't want to risk their own own, own money. But you're yeah. saying, I'll give you a free membership. Yep. You can go online, have have a look at how much your rewards are adding up. Yep. And if you go and recruit, because basically they'd be not the first tier, but the second tier, the the people that they got in, yep. if they got seven people in, mm. right, then that's essentially a whole new membership as well, seven times 15%. Yeah, but yeah. There, is a flaw, uh, there is a flaw to it, which I hadn't figured out, I'll be honest, and that is when the funds were frozen, you wouldn't be able to get your money out. So you wouldn't be able to pay me back. Yeah, well, when the funds are frozen, everybody loses. Yeah, but then Rob goes, this, stops is, a, at that this point. is a good thing. I can see the money in here, and I want to accumulate it. Because a lot of people tell me they never tried to get their money out of Hyperverse. I've got people who yeah, email at, me now well, at, saying they've never the tried. Yeah, well, <laughs> at, at the start... So then you find money from another place to pay off It was withdrawn, Danny. but it wasn't stopped. Uh, mm. by, I mean, right, the, the withdrawal stopped... But they weren't like cease forever, or that's that's what the story was. Mm. It was yeah. You know, oh well, they've run into those problems. I think with the multiple accounts. Yeah. But but no, it's not over. They just need to work this out, and then everything will be started again. Because mm. I think that was the original story. I yeah. think. So there was there was another take on that as well. Uh, obviously they were gifting memberships. And then that would, like you said, people that wouldn't risk wouldn't get involved, but now they're in it, then they went selling it. But I think worldwide, people at the top weren't having their accounts frozen. Because I, if I was if I was hyperverse and Mr. H and I had a mask and I didn't know, like, really, <laughs> anyway, um, I would look at the people that were generating the, the newbies and I would let them I think if you were at the top, and you had multiple accounts, only one of those accounts would be a VIP. True. And they might have done things like, when we don't know, VIP4s and VIP5s can keep withdrawing. And they would have looked at the incoming money. And honestly, I've been watching all these videos, and I remember one of them I'm watching there, and Keith's going, oh, I've just withdrawn again. Oh, I've withdrawn again. And he withdrew four times a day, and I'm not having a problem. And I think the guys that were bringing in the people could still withdraw mm. and um and i think um and also i do believe it would make common sense that if you're a newbie you the formula for them to run a successful ponzi scheme like any ponzi scheme they need people to rave about it so people who've put in say you've got your thousand dollar account the first withdrawal you do their main goal would have been to let that money go out 
Well, you got to remember is that that withdrawal, um, the withdrawals stopped supposedly yep. because of the multiple account issue. No, that's what they said. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, that's what they said. Yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't make any sense to me at all because it shouldn't really matter who has the accounts or how many accounts that they have. Yeah. You know, if if the system was set up correctly and you'd think anybody who had any nows mm -hmm. who could be trusted to be, you know, like an executive in any scheme would have set it up, you know, like correctly at the start. Well, you think about it. The formula is quite simple, really, isn't it? Let's say we've got 100 people. And the 100 people go out there and they all invest $300. Mathematically speaking, the people that pay the 300, 50% of those people will probably try to take their money out and see if it's real. Let's yeah. satisfy them, let them get some money out. Now, out of that 50 people, probably 40 of them are going to be active people and they're going to recruit other people. So those 40 people are probably all, let's say 40 mm -hmm. people are going to bring in two people. That's 120 people. So now we've got 120 people, so that grows. And out of that 120 people, now we've got 50 people that will generate another two people into the scheme. I, I, I think the key thing here is, is that as that was growing, mm. that fell over really fast. Mm. Like, like realistically, how, how long did that go? Because I think yeah. Hyperverse started what in December? Well, I think they got the traction with Hyperfund. So Hyperfund was really cool because Hyperfund was when, because this is why I think Keith Williams is top dog. Hyperfund was really cool. Well, Hyperfund was there to fund Hyperfund the crypto was things. Really cool. Yeah. So Keith, Keith Williams and another lady, Amanda Lee, who's an Australian, bloody Australians, they were in a Zoom meeting with 100 people in it and they were chuffed that they had 100 people in their Zoom meeting. But now these Zoom meetings in the hyper community are a thousand plus an overflow room, mm. normally 1800. And Which they, is quite impressive, I have to say. Well, it is. And then you've got other groups. So you had the other, the Toby show. They had. So this is when it gets really, if you want to know some real clever shit, uh, uh, it's called, the, there's Troy, there's David, and there was another guy called Marcus. And they were um, big fans of pushing Hyperverse. And they were back in it when it was Hyperfund. Then when all the funds got frozen, they actually went on to Keith's meeting and they got to ask him the question. And they were saying to Keith, why... There's another hyper nation and there's hyperverse over here, but they're two separate entities. And Keith's going, oh no 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 no, they're, they're they're all the same, blah blah blah. And they go, no, they're two separate entities. And hyper nation doesn't want the uh, the debt of the verse. This is the, the lingo they were using, and that made a lot of sense. I can't remember why I started this conversation now, but <laughs> the uh, oh, that's right. Now, when Keith Williams got made global sales representative for hypernation they basically those three lads with their show decided to tell people it's time to diversify and they told everyone that Novatech is the new ponzi scheme and they were stealing the community from keith and other people and they were coming they ran a meeting that had five thousand people in their zoom really? meeting. and that we two days later then Keith Williams got announced as the global sales representative for Hyper Nation, and they put a name to the face, so to speak. Yeah. Thinking, and I realised then, I'm thinking, well, actually, this isn't about, this is about the community. And the, the community is the ones, the sales team. These are the ones that spread the hype. This is the most important asset that any of these Ponzi schemes have got. The thing that I worked out <coughs> is, is that the, the idea behind the community Okay. Yeah. Is that when when your metaverse starts, all that community go in and become virtual people mm. in the community. Um yeah. Which means that if if you're selling it to somebody else, mm -hmm. right, who you know, like you say, yeah, you know, like come along and be part of the metaverse, mm -hmm. you know, as, as if there's only one metaverse, of course, you know, like there's not. But there, there's a community that's already in there, you know, that they're going, you're, you're not walking into an empty street or an empty town or an empty mm -hmm. city or anything like that, right? The community, i.e. I. the users, are already in there. But, of course... The interesting thing with Hypernation is that all these people have no idea and no real interest 
mm. um, of being in the metaverse, right? Nobody's, in fact, mm. I have never even addressed that. You, know, you have never addressed that. Well, that, that. No one's got an interest in the metaverse. That, no. that whole community have been created, supposedly, as far as I understand, yeah. have been created that when the metaverse actually is open for business, you go in there, yeah, you know, like you log in and, and you would go in there, presumably with your headset or however it is that you um, interact with the metaverse. You're mm. in there. So when new people are, are enticed to come into the metaverse, mm. it's it's populated. Mm. Yeah, it's going. Yeah, it's the keys to the house. They're selling the keys to the house, but there's no house to put the key in. Well, they're supposedly selling the keys to the house, but there's already people in the house, so you can take a room. Yeah. Um, <laughs> interesting enough, though, this is the thing that really got me all the way along. This oh, this reminds me of one of those um, below deck things, and they're doing the talk about the hist- the the se- series it was, and this is what I feel like our discussion is like. But you don't I don't know if you watched Below Deck, but it's such a no, thing. I've never watched it. Oh, it's a sailing yachting show, and um, they have rich people go on these yachts and they sail around, and then they all have all problems on the boat, and people hook up together and people have arguments together, and then they get together at the end of the show where everyone I'll hates it. What if that's a metaverse that's going to yeah. take off? So my argument, <laughs> my argument is these guys were actually selling the the dream of the metaverse, but when they are in all the meetings, they're talking about how to sell the tickets, and they keep, uh, and also the metaverse was something that you want to invest in because it's going to be this, going to be that. It is uh, it is really hard to find an analogy. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like to be perfectly honest, because yeah, they they're selling passports to a a sports game. Well, to people who d- who aren't interested in that sports, sports. game, exactly right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and it should I, be young people, not these old folks. Yeah, like like has it's anybody go ever said, <laughs> hey, you know, like you can get involved in hibernation, become part of the community, right? And and when we open the metaverse, you're all going to be in it. But, but they never say, are you interested in actually being on, at, yeah. like in the metaverse? Because <laughs> oh. I I ne- have you ever heard that? No, no, never. Um, I've no, never heard that. No, and the thing is that these guys that are selling it are taking the money out that they're theoretically, they're, they're cashing up now yeah. for something they're selling that's in the future. So yeah. if they're cashing, taking the money out now, then they don't obviously believe the future dream of the metaverse. They're just making money. If 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 there's metaverse and, and buying virtual land and putting... Uh, Virtual shops and having an avatar of who who you are, you know, mm. walking around, interacting, whatever it is. If that's the product, mm. where's their money coming from right now to pay all the rewards? Yeah, they got none left. No, well, that's their product. Yeah. The metaverse. The metaverse hasn't been created yet. All right. So what what are they doing right now to earn any money? Yeah. They're just, they're just stalling tactics the whole nine yards. There is one other aspect which horrifies well, me. Well, I think that's the definition of the Ponzi scheme, right, that Charles Ponzi mm. never invested the money that he took in. Never invested the money he took in. Right, yes. He he took mm. the money in, but he mm. never invested it. He said he was going to invest it, oh, yeah. right, but he never invested it. Right, right now, all these people... So seemingly are taking money in. Where have they invested it? Yeah. Well, right, yeah. we we can't see anything. Right, we can't see anybody that they've employed. Mm-hmm. We can't see anybody who's earning any wages. We can't see any any. Uh, we can't see the metaverse. Well, what what you can see, arguably, are those um like cartoon like mm-hmm. videos of you know people walking along and there's you know like the universal they've got a new graphics artist and that's what they've done whatever it is because the graphics yeah, get better it's supposed to be a thousand developers the, the billboard is yeah. that where the money has gone on the video oh, i don't but know but don't forget about the founders this is the thing we haven't just talked about yet the what the founders the there's, founders there's, well sam um ryan Zhu. he's right. a legend did you know that in 19 um 2021 um ryan Zhu took a job that paid one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year. Could well, we... not personally, but I did hear that. Yeah, and I think uh, from you, he worked there for six months. <laughs> and why would a billionaire go work in some other company? Uh, I think it was twenty one. I'm pretty sure because it was um, Vinny from Project Frugal. He found the art- article oh, and he found right. the actual ledger of him being working in this company. 
Um, the other one, which is really interesting, which I really need to emphasize on this one, is with Hyperverse, I went to create an account. And when I went to create the account, they asked me for an affiliate ID. And I just made up something. And I created an account. Okay, right. The affiliate ID is the person in your upline. Yes. And it won't let you create an account um, with the ID. Now, oh, and I've got another thing you can remind me. Ask me about Stable Day in a second, right? I'll just get this off my chest. With Hyper Nation, you can't actually get in there unless you buy one of those NFTs. Yeah. So I can't go in there as Danny DeHeck and have a nose. Can you do that with a green box? I still need to buy the green box. If you get the green box, do you do you need an aff- oh. No, you don't. Because you go to you see something. I forgot what it is. It's some, oh, so you're this talking is, about that other So this site. is the, the billboards. Um, I wish I knew it. See something. It's called See yeah, something. Yeah, I've heard um, And basically, this is what the billboards are doing. That's why I'm a bit alarmed, because the billboards are advertising that people can buy these NFTs. They look at it and think, oh, it looks really cool. And then they see all the hype and the fun of it, the game side of it, because Mr. H is basically a game player. Mm. And people are looking at him as a, you know, just like you would have, if you watch a game, well, I'm in the games, but if you watch them, you can see a lot of parallels. And the virtual city that you see on Hypernation is actually, I found that a game that looked like they used it to build the bazaar. So this picture behind us is a movie, and it was used, right? But they have actually found a game that allows you to build a virtual city. They've built a virtual city, recorded it as a video, and now they're using it as their backdrop as to what the city looks like. But it's from a game. So when I look at Mr. H coming on and doing his talks, it seems to be appealing to the 25 to 35-year-old market that's been playing games since leaving school and should have got a job but stayed at home. They are the ones that are probably going to buy these NFTs. Then they get into this, uh, the hyper nation, and they can buy a membership where they can take a risk. Well, the interesting thing there is that I think it was on that video where Mark Zuckerberg was talking about the metaverse that people were saying, well, there's already metaverses out there. I didn't know that. Uh, in the game market. Yeah. Yep. And and uh, Roblox, you know, what my daughter, you know, like is in, is considered metaverse because you can mm. go in there and you can buy um, uh, materials and things, you know, like, I, I don't know what they are, and you can build stuff and... That already exists, right? Right. So this is the interesting thing. Well, th- this picture here is actually from that game I was talking about. Okay. And this is, um, if uh, if this plays through, you will see that it's, um, uh, if I get to the right part, I think it's going to move in a minute. Was that I the... Think it's got a teleporter there. Is it so looks it pretty good. related to Star Trek. So this will soon go off to a moon <laughs> and you'll see them building it in real time. And this is the closest I sort of got to thinking, oh my God, that's, um, I've seen something, because they had the crater of the moon was empty and yeah. the crater that they were using was the same, except it had different buildings. And I thought, oh, the moon now. let's go. Let's, let me take you. Here we go. Let me take you to the ecosystem. Unless it loops. If it loops, I lie. Oh, don't crash. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, uh, so now we're off to a virtual city. Uh, my name is Captain De Heck, and we're flying at approximately 1,000 feet. Yeah, and we should have nighttime come to us. I think we're going to the yacht club. I think oh, we're going to Oh, my go- God. Oh. Right. Who, 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 where they get their yeah, license And now from, we eh? should see a moon. A lot of generic buildings in there, I have to oh, say. Look yeah, at all that. the same roofs. Yeah, it's all the same. Yeah. yeah. Um, but when you see something like this, and this is people saying this is the um, ecosystem, and then you think, hold on a minute, this is a game, and they're using the imagery out of, out of it to entice you to um, get involved in it. Well, a lot of these games are metaverses, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Which which begs the question, ladies and gentlemen, if you were investing in this, a lot of these uh, people that are your potential customers are already in a metaverse. Yeah. Um, they're, they're in a metaverse related to a game that is of interest to them and all of their friends are in there. Mm-hmm. The, they live in their neighbourhood, like like their metaverse has already been created. Mm-hmm. If Hyper Nation right create one, why would they go there? You know, right? Well, they might go to Facebook's metaverse because that's going to be huge, and that'll yeah. be linked into Facebook and you know, you know all of their um, social media. I still want to see the moon, mate. 
I have to do that clicking, you'll understand that one. Um, I still, this must be jam, but this, I think this could be a long video. I hope it's got no sound because in the background it'll be playing a sound and not be coming through, but, uh, and we, they won't be able to hear us talking, you know what I'm saying? So it's quite fun. It oh, yeah, no, we're going thing. back. I might find Where another one. the Hoover Dam? Yeah, no, I'm going to find the other one if I've got it here somewhere. Um, that's the old metaverse. Uh, that's the hibernation. That's actually the backdrop of their now, Facebook page. Now, that one there didn't impress me at all because no. if you watch it, it just repeats itself over and over, right? right? So that's a kind of a low-tech yeah. one. Oh, where is it? There. I say this in case you're watching this. A lot of these buildings are generic. You see, it just repeats itself. It's a bit fishy, I'll tell you that. Oh, lordy. Yeah. Um, yeah, but no, they, these guys are just clever hackers, really. See what I'm doing now? Well, I have uh, well yeah. <laughs> look, you've got to yeah. say they're pretty it's clever, don't the you? Yeah, yeah, like realistically. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I haven't got the other video. I thought I did have it here, um, but I don't. But I wonder what's that one there? Popping squares? What's that? Popping squares. Oh, how boring is that? That must have been like one of the default ones. But that's the metaverse there. So any, <laughs> anyway, I, I, I want to ask you a few questions. So, yeah. for All example. Right. I'll go back to our, our what we do know, the other theme. Have you been watching the leadership meetings recently, last oh, few weeks? Well, or? I'll tell you what, I've actually, what I'm finding a problem is, is actually quite demoralizing uh, watching them. And I've come up with a cunning way of doing it um, because I don't want to use their content. I want to create my own stuff. Yep. And I've got all these roadblocks at the moment. So what I thought I would do, I use a program called Descript. I was going to grab their video, drop it into Descript, have the whole script written out there, especially Brenda Chanda, because people are complaining about the bullshit that's coming out of her mouth at the moment. Yeah. Then I'm going to have a script, and then I'm going to listen to the script because I'm, I'm dyslexic. So I'm going to listen to the script and cut out all the paragraphs that mean nothing. And when she makes all these statements, you know, like um, one of the statements she made today that I heard of was that uh, Hyperverse was a victim. And they got victim by people creating multiple accounts. Hmm. And these people didn't just create multiple countries were you know, and I'm going, oh my God. So I'm listening to that thing. I want to say, so I'm going to listen. And then she's other things that she said, I've got about six main points that she said that the rewards have been paid. So now they're telling people that hyperverse, they've done the right thing to the people and they are paying out the rewards. And I'm going, what rewards? Where's the money? And they're talking about hyperbond. So they adopt these philosophies and tell people that hyperbond is actually the payment. But you can only use hyperbond to get yourself into the next Ponzi scheme. Mm. So I'm sitting there thinking, I want to say this. I mean, I don't want to sit there and do these five, Like this is, we've been here for two hours, mate. It feels like it. Yeah, You're I think we right. need I to th wrap this up. I think I've lost like 1.78 yeah, kg. Hot. So I, I, very I used to do <laughs> these videos for five hours. I know. And I you know. used to go for your walks. Because uh, Rob yeah. does walks and he listened to my podcast and I'd yeah, say to Rob, I, I lost know? a lot more weight when I was listening to Danny's videos. <laughs> yeah. I was walking longer. Yeah. So um if you are still listening to this, Rob and I are doing this thing on Monday nights called Think Tank. And it's basically, um, we're growing it slowly, but there's just a handful of people that want to be motivated. It's not all about Ponzi schemes. But um, one thing we've been working on at the moment is encouraging people to do 10,000 steps a day. And Rob's done that for quite a long time. And we've got Dave, Accountable Dave, he's been doing it for a long time. I've just started. Helen and my partner's doing it. And we've got a young lady coming on tomorrow night as well, which I met, who rang up to buy one of my dropshipping businesses. Oh, it's Monday tomorrow, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, and I said to her, I'll come along to Think Tank. And it's, it's quite a nice thing to be part of. But it's just a general chat with people that think a bit different, who want a bit of encouragement or motivation. And I think that's where I want to take this journey. I don't want to sit there with this negative stuff. I, even though I'm saving people from Ponzi schemes, it does my friggin' head I, in. Five hours of negativity. I, th I, think, I think that I what you are thinking of doing is the good thing. I think, look, there's an opportunity out there right, for anybody who's, who's, involved, who, who's involved to listen to Danny's videos understand where he's coming from and then go back to your teams and ask those questions and you know like and and if you get answers or even if you don't get answers come back and put them as comments on Danny's video so that anybody who's mm -hmm. watching his video Danny himself you know can learn you know what the answers are so that if, if these are Ponzi schemes, right, it's going to get highlighted. If they're not Ponzi schemes, hey, you know, like, 
Well, who? You know, you know like, let's get 100 million other people involved. The, um, the one with the Hyperdeo, which is Sam Lee's new baby, right? Mm-hmm. He, uh, they had an address. Hyperdeo or Stable, uh, Stable Deo. Deo? They had an address on the bottom of their company office. I found that company office and it was um, Regis, a shared office space. Oh, I like that other one. The very next day, I went there and they changed it to a Japanese office. And it was another Regis address. Then I went to their uh, Facebook page, and you can go to um, page transparency, and you can see normally it tells you who the admins are and what country they're from. Okay. It didn't have any admins. I'm sitting there going, they always have admins. Have a look at any Facebook page. Yeah. Look at the page transparency. And that's, if you're looking at these Ponzi schemes, because I'd love to do a whole lot of key identifiers of how to know it's a Ponzi scheme. Um, obviously, phone number's never on the website. Um, it's often crypto only. Always have membership plans, unrealistic rewards. And it basically, I've nailed it all down to two things. If it's got crypto plus MLM equals scam. Boom. <laughs> Done. It's how simple it is. But, um, you know, sometimes you think, oh, boy, God, how much time and energy, how much convincing do I need? And people are still emailing me every single day asking me if this one is a Ponzi scheme. And I said, just all of them that have crypto, email them, are scams. End of story. I, I, I get really confused how, how yeah, you know, like there's so many people involved and there's so many people involved at various levels. I, I, I mm. just get really confused why they're not telling you how wrong you are. Well, yeah, yeah. Why, why they're not coming on onto the videos um, emailing you, leaving comments or whatever, and, and and dissecting all of the points that you make and mm. say you're wrong on this point because of this, you're wrong on this point because of this, because that's what I would be doing. Mm. You know, like if if I was involved in anything and I believed it, yeah. and and I I knew about it, and someone is being highly critical, I would go and break them down. I, I'd wow. say, you know, like oh, you're but, making yeah, these yeah. points, you know, you can't back that up, you mm. know, you're wrong because of A, B and C, mm. blah, blah, blah. You know, so this is the whole thing. If you're out there and you think that Danny's full of beep, <laughs> then go and tell yeah, him oh, on yeah. those comments. Point yeah. out where he's made his mistake. Yeah. Maybe point out where on the video he said such and such. Yeah, you know, right, and then everybody can listen to what he actually said mm. and say this. This is the uh, rebuttal of that. They won't, but we're it. not it's getting strange. that. No, we're not. And the funny thing is, um, on the, the 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 what I call the congratulations speech when Keith Williams thought he is knighted by the king, and he was <laughs> sitting there telling everyone that he's um. You know, sitting there telling everyone that he's uh, overwhelmed with the fact that he's been appointed the global sales, whatever. What's absolutely what was that all about? Well, he's just got. He's now the sale, the global sales representative for Hibernation. And I'm yeah, going. He, he's been made something by someone we don't know. He doesn't to know. do <laughs> some work that we don't know what it is. Yeah, and yeah, then that, they, and that, then and then they said there's more announcements coming out over the next few weeks that people will be surprised with. So what did they announce? Other sales representative, Brenda Chunder. Um, Clayton Ford, I think, or it might have been another guy. All right. And they are now many, many keeps. <laughs> and I, and then... I'm doing you know, these little nodding dolls. And then they start talking about how the platform this and the platform that, and I'm thinking, oh, they're talking about the platform. So to me, it's like a piece of software. Obviously, it's a website, and it's got a database of people and they're watching it. And Keith will often say, oh, you're a VIP five. And um, one couple that come on once, they were responsible for bringing in $24 million to Hyperverse. And they have, um, I've forgotten how many, 2,000 people in their team. And I'm going, well, how do you get that data? If you're just Joe Blogs like me, who decided to promote it to you, and you went and told your fan club, mm. three people, and, um, <laughs> and then I got rich from it, then all of a sudden corporate theoretical corporate, is now telling me all the figures that these guys are bringing in. How does he keep track of all that? Why would corporate be telling anybody? Well, they wouldn't. Are there no yeah. privacy And this issues? is why I think Hyper Nation will get traction, is because it's hidden behind an NFT. You have to get in. I, no one can get in there and see this. Now it's like a secret community of people, and they're telling everyone they find out all the bumps. 
But and every time somebody's um, and I think what they were going to be doing now is I think that Keith will buy the program or the software or the platform, and he will be the new owner of it. Because if you've got Stable Deo, you've got Sam Lee running that as an independent. There was rumour that Sam Lee was going to go off and start up Hyper One, and then they produced all these photos of him in a penthouse, and I looked at the timestamps, and they were taken in 2018, and I'm going, come on, guys, look. And uh, that never happened. But now he's come out and he's done Stable Deo. He's doing that. Now you've got Nova Tech, and they've got this religious minister crazy lady, which I put a, a Star of David on the forehead, she is running it with her husband. These two people that are running that, Novatec, have gone bankrupt. And then you've got Super One and Andreas. Now, that's another Ponzi scheme. He's got a face to the name. And then you've got dumb old Mr. H, who's theoretically running Hyper Nation. And then all of a sudden, they appoint all these sales leaders, teams. I reckon the next natural step will be that Keith will be saying, we're taking over. We don't like the way that Hyper... Um, nation, which is Mr. H and his clonies and his film crew, are running it, and we've decided that we're going to buy it and do it properly. And it'll be called Hyper Keith. <laughs> 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 yeah. But you know, I think that's I think that's where it's going, if they can keep this going long enough. Oh. And that's why the, when they saw that these guys, the, the you know, the David, uh, those um, Troy, Marcus, and they saw they had 5,000 people in a Zoom meeting, they freaked out because 5,000 people in a Zoom meeting and they're getting 2,000 in their meetings and there's meant to be 1.5 million people associated with... Mm. Why, why is, out of 1.5 people who've signed up for these accounts, why is there only 2,000 people in these leadership meetings? And now they're telling people that if they're not signed into Hypernation every day and they're not contributing by being involved in the social media... So the next thing I'm watching... You know, and remember, with that, um, those people needing to sign in, of course, that's what you would need to do if you're the community for a metaverse that mm -hmm. you're trying to sell at some stage. You you would need a community that's actually um, logged in, active, yeah. a lot of the times. Is as that well. like Elon Musk buying Twitter and then realizing there's all these faked accounts so that he bought so many million accounts and then he wants to know how many of these people are active? Yeah, well, I, yeah, I think it's part, part <laughs> yeah. of the um, $8 a month verification is that he, he was um, saying is that if people are verified, mm. you, you, you can be pretty sure that most, the vast majority of the people that are verified are real people. Mm. Because if, if you were creating bots... Mm -hmm. And only verified people, you know, like can do whatever the bots are doing, mm -hmm. right? Then nobody who is behind the bots would be paying eight dollars every month, you know, mm -hmm. like for all of their uh, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of bots, yeah. because it would be costing them fortune. Well, it's like Gmail and YouTube. I get all these fake posts every day, fifty of them, and I'm mm -hmm. deleting them manually. I went back, got onto support with YouTube, and said, eh, "I'm getting all these stupid Instagram. We can get your money back." Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and yeah, I'm deleting yeah, them, yeah. deleting them, deleting them, and they go, oh, you can block them. And I go, oh, well, I'm blocking 50 of them a day. People light up these accounts. So, if, you know, how many followers are, mm. you know, you have to have a YouTube account. You sure have to have a Gmail yeah. account, and then you have a YouTube account. And it's like, oh. That is, is, is one of the things that I noticed, that if you go into Facebook mm -hmm. and you comment on any of these hyper um, pages, You'll get, you'll get all these people that are coming in with links to Telegram accounts and all those, you know, like to sell you something else. Yeah, you know, like mm. it's, mm. yeah, like it's kind of like you're walking in and there's fleas jumping on you, uh -huh. you know, because <laughs> uh -huh. that's what it feels like. And all, all of this, any social media to do with in, any of this stuff, all these people come in, they're either trying to sell you another scheme mm -hmm. or they're trying to sell you a way to be able to get your money out of Hyperverse that you couldn't get it out. And there's, and you know, do, oh, um, this is an interesting one. I pay for YouTube. I know you probably don't. You put up my ads. No, I do now. Oh, you do? Right. I do. So um, Why? Well, the funny thing was, I've paid for it for two months, yeah, and now I watch less YouTube. Yeah, 
Um, because I'm thinking, like, I don't, I don't know that that's related. Well, <laughs> what I, what, I'm, I'm watching less. Why I pay for YouTube is because when I was doing a, a bundle over, a, I don't know if that's the right word, is it? Over a video, the ads would come up, and it, yeah. Uh, so with paying it, you get rid of the ads. So let's say Facebook decided to say, look, if you pay ten dollars a month, then there's going to be no adverts. Wouldn't that be worth the investment in time? Because the adverts that you're scrolling through and you. You know, and I think what Elon's doing with Twitter is actually feasible. That if you pay Twitter a monthly fee, so my YouTube channel, I get a little bit of money from it, and I get a little bit of money from the people that pay who watch. Yeah, yeah, the and, premium yeah. View, yeah. viewers. Very, but very little. Like one. What a lot of people were saying though is that it's very difficult to charge for anything that used to be free. Yeah. Yeah. And and to be a a standard user on Twitter used to be free, mm -hmm. and usually the people that were verified were only the ones that um, had some kind of standing in the community, you know, like they're an actor or yeah or um, one of my mates has got it. No, it's not fair, but that's why I got therapy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, like, and I think like it's an interesting one. Ads ads drive the internet. Mm. And I don't necessarily like watching ads, but I don't know that I want to keep paying YouTube to not see ads, you know mm. what I mean? You know? Yeah. There has to be something else. I mean, I think, uh, I don't know, I'm on 20 different social media platforms, you know, um, anything from Tumblr, Twitch, um, you know, um, Blogger, you know, anything that's a platform. And I, I basically, when I post a blog on my website, it goes to all those platforms and I believe that builds my bigger footprint for my website. And then it gives my website more credibility because it's linked into more platforms. That's the only reason I do it. I don't, I don't spend any time on Tumblr, but every single blog that I've posted mm. gets to be on Tumblr. And um, so then I'm thinking, well, when Google Index goes through and says, oh, he's got, I actually think I've got 150,000 backlinks to tech.com. And I think that's why I get it, the traffic. If you if you had a look at, at what they are supposedly doing with Hypernation, mm -hmm. if 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 Hypernation, the metaverse, if was actually going, yeah. like if it was going now, if it if it was um, functioning, if you could log in, if you could you put on your headset, you could immerse yourself, you could buy property, you could trade, you could do if that was going now. This would make sense mm -hmm. up to what well, but what arguably yeah. makes sense to a certain right? clientele for over fifty. Uh, arg arguably makes sense, but but the funny thing is, is that when when you look at this, mm -hmm. people are pay paying. People are because it's not an investment. Oh, that's right. People are paying to be one. part to get a passport. To be on the metaverse that they're never going to be in. People do that. They can't be in it now, yeah. and all of this other stuff. Whereas the you turn it around the other way, the people that you are in, you are investing or giving your money to as a membership, mm. right, are taking your money, and then they're paying you supposedly uh, multiples of your membership back. Mm. To do nothing <laughs> because there's nothing for you to do because there's no metaverse for you to be in and populate. But that's like going on a holiday, isn't it? You go to the travel agent and they go, "Look, we're, we're gonna, we've got a new country you can go visit. What type of country would you like to be? Well, I like third world traveling. Well, this one's got everything you could ever dream of. Give us your passport, give us your money, uh, and we'll let you know when the country's ready." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit like Thunderbirds, isn't it? You yeah. know, like we haven't put Ooh, all the good, palms that. up yet. Yeah. And we haven't built, you know, like the house on the top of the cliff. Yeah. Um, but mm. it is interesting that they are, I'm just trying to think of an analogy. There must be an analogy that you're, you're paying a customer to turn up. It's, it's like when they open a new nightclub mm -hmm. and, and they pay people to actually stand in line. Oh, have you heard that? I haven't. Um, yeah, I haven't well, talked they about used that. to pay people it's to exactly stand in line yep. so that this new nightclub looked really, really popular. Mm. And of course, they'd tell the bouncers, you know, like, 
we don't want you to let everybody in. Yeah, yeah. Like we don't want you to let everybody in. We want at least twenty people lined up outside so that everybody walking along, you know, having a look at, you know, yeah. what nightclub they're and going. That works. Oh, oh, everybody there. And then you're in line. You're in line. You're like you're twenty back and you and you're thinking, never been here before, mm. but it looks like really popular. Um, you know, and when you inch forward and now you're 15 back and 12 and yeah, 10 the and then deal. you get in and there's no one there. Mm. <laughs> yeah. so the only people that were there were the 20 people that yeah. were ahead of you that got in. Well, that's something we haven't talked about because these Zoom meetings that they do are, are shocking. They say they have a thousand people in there and I've watched so many of them. It's not funny. I've probably watched a hundred of them. They basically have a thousand people in there, and then they have a question and answer. As section. the same people. Yep, ten first ten people, everyone saying how wonderful it was, and it was great, and it's fantastic, and it's great, and especially that guy Hyper, whatever his name is, the guy that lives at home with his mum, Hyper, yeah, <laughs> and um, yeah. yeah, Hyper driver, whatever his name is, and he's an Uber driver for a real lot. Anyway, so and then uh, you know five people that haven't been on before get on there and they ask about how do I withdraw my money, and they cut them off. <laughs> you know, that, I don't, we don't want negative questions here. And uh, I, I, yeah. I, I really do think that, you know, uh, these videos, other people doing these videos, um, those people that are on those meetings that are asking the difficult questions, mm. that's, that's an opportunity. Mm. That's an opportunity. You know, like in any legitimate business... Would, would take that opportunity to say, hey, you know, we can allay all of these fears. We, we can mm. answer all these questions. Mm. Uh, like, we know all the answers. There's a straightforward answer, and he, he, here it is. So this is the opportunity down in the comment section below. Um, yeah. Educate well, I reckon Daniel. what we should do here is we should finish it here at 2 hours and 25 minutes. And this is going to actually be a good video, because originally we did this video for you, right? No. We did it for you. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. Another long haul video. I'm going to get so much criticism from people. But I love these videos. And I don't know about timestamps in this one because I don't know. I think, No, just you know, let it ride. Yeah. Now, this is what you call I'm driving on a holiday and you're going to listen to Danny and the – your name's not Rob? No. Uh, and this is something you can listen to about Hyperverse. So if you're thinking about getting involved Craig. in a Ponzi – Craig – Craig, I'm from Australia. Uh, Aussie, bloody Aussie. So this is, if you think about getting involved in Ponzi schemes and you've got any questions you want to know anything about it, then reach out to us, ask us any of those silly questions that you're too embarrassed reach to ask. Reach out to Danny. Yeah, right. Okay, so I'm going to stop it here, and this has um, been um, Danny and Rob, and I don't even know how this conversation started. Craig. Craig. Robbed Craig. Craig got robbed. Okay, <laughs> you're too scared to put this on your own YouTube yeah, Absolutely. Oh, this is brilliant. Is it because of the background? No, is it? No, no? It's all yours. All right. So what we're going to do, if you're going to go back you're to famous. the start, I'm not famous. You're famous, mate. You're a friend no of mine. Me. Look. People are going to say, "Who does Danny like?" You know, I don't know if you've heard of Dizzy Taylor. When I was stalking I Cal Pesci, non Dizzy Taylor. No, Dizzy Taylor is Cal Pesci Patel's best friend. And if you <laughs> want to find out anything that Cal Pesci Patel was doing, and Dizzy used to be a hairdresser, and then he got involved in. Hyperverse. They've been so good to me. Then, so I, I, when I was stalking <laughs> um, Kalpish Patel, I used to just go to Dizzy's Facebook page, oh, which is no. he has it all public, and find out what Kalpish was up to. It was brilliant. Um, but anyway, we're going to do an introduction to this two hour and twenty seven minute. Where, um, where are you looking? Oh, oh I see it's down it. there. Yeah. yeah. So that's um, it's good night from me, and it's and good it's night good from night him. Good night from him. Yeah. So there you go. That's us. So thank you for watching. Remember, um, hit the bell, ding, 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 and um, subscribe, and um, oh, and like, and that will tell YouTube that you and people tell me these long videos don't work. I got a lady, a guy. They shouldn't work. They shouldn't I work. Listen to it. The average watch time. Have you listened to any of this? Yeah. No. Um, well, listen to you. The average watch time for an, a video this long is nine minutes. Yeah. It used to and be six still, minutes. <laughs> so if problems. you've listened to this for the nine minutes, you need to reach out and get help. Yeah. Okay. And don't ask and Mark. Danny will have have help on his next video about yeah. how to cure you from watching his videos. No, cool. All right. So it's good night. And sign Good morning. And thank you, beautiful people. Hasta la vista, baby. Okay.